Oh boy. Uh oh. I hear some doubling. I do that every week, Matt. <laughs> it's because I go to the Ew. stream to get the link to the stream for the. Oh, gotcha. The bat signal. Z bat signal. Rich, you should come join us in our Slack. Yeah, I've uh, I did I think I tried a couple of times, but um, it was always uh, you need to be in certain times, don't you? Because you only accept it. So. Oh, we'll hook uh -huh. you up. Yeah, I'll send you a link. Nice, awesome. Yeah, that'd be great. Do you still have to pay for every member? You do, don't you? No, kind of. no. no, no. There's no. there's free. It's free, but you only get to keep like the last 10,000 messages right. of like yeah. all the channels combined. So yeah. like, you say something and it'll be gone within a day. Yeah, you know? no, right. You're like 10,000, yes, that's a load, but it's not, yeah. Yeah. During the Mac Pro announcement, I think there were like something like 2,200 missed messages I had in one day. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Oh, man. It's super annoying if you're trying to find something you had, but yeah. yeah. It's gone. Yeah, we make sure to pin anything in there that's important so it doesn't disappear. <laughs> All right, sharing that. All right, Good to go there. That's good. All right, let me double check the site. Oh cool, you've got Chris Schmidt on soon, I see. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Super cool, man. Oh, Casey and Josh. Nice. Uh -huh. Jules as well. Andrew Price. Yes. Man. Not Andrew Let's Price. See. We were going to have Andrew Price, but he backed out. Yeah. Not so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I see the notes. Oh, shame. Have you met him? No. I've seen oh, a lot yeah. of his like tutorials and I've yeah. seen a lot of bits and yeah, he's all over the place, but yeah, he is. I guess he's super busy all the time. Hey. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> I've yet to see this. <laughs> All right, awesome. Here's our purdy faces. We're gonna get going here. See some people coming in. We got Jason, <clears throat> Dan Marino, we got that MoGraph <clears throat> guy, whoever that is. <laughs> and yeah, uh, that guy's a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think we're good to go. We probably won't have the usual uh, as much chat action as we usually have because uh uh usually we do this during the day so people are at work and you get a lot of people <laughs> what time is it it's it's a little late here so we may not have quite as many chatters rick bogus <laughs> what's up rick bogus chat's working all right everything's good Rich, here if you want to follow along it's uh just youtube.com slash uh mograph or, and then yeah. you'll see uh uh Sweet. the live stream hopefully hoping that doesn't crash skype uh, <laughs> what could go wrong <laughs> right. i mean you can see it in skype too because it all comes through yeah. to this little window but yeah 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 it's all a bit right. small hey uh live now uh dave you got the metronome on. that's really weird Sweet. i tested it and the metronome was not on and all of a sudden it turned itself back on mm. weird All right, I am rolling here. Right. I am rolling on my side, yes. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. All right, I think we're good. Um, Rich, are you rolling now? You can roll now. The audio? Let's mm -hmm. give it a go. Yep. Yep, that's working. It's not looped, so should be good. All right. <laughs> cool. Uh, we're going to do a sync, so it will be one, two, three, clap. So here we go. Ready? <laughs> and get your hands ready. They're here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, Giant hands. three. Cool. Oh, the delay. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It'll be fu it'll be fine. It'll all line it. up in post, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fix it later. Yeah. It'll be fine. <laughs> um. 
All right, so uh, we're going to do the intro. I'll say I'm Dave. Matt will say I'm Matt, and he's going to intro you. And when he intros you, just say, hey, what's up, everyone? Something really short, because immediately I'm going to yeah. go into the whole spiel. So I think cool. we are okay. good to go. <clears throat> everybody ready? Sounds good. Let's do it. Nice. All right. <clears throat> What's up and welcome to another MoGraph MoCast. I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. And joining us today is a legend in the MoGraph field. The man himself, <laughs> Mr. Rich Nosworthy. Hi, everyone. Great to be here. And, awesome to be on the show. And MoGraph <laughs> is a supplement to our site, MoGraph.com, which is a motion graphics tutorial site with tutorials, plugins, podcasts, other MoGraph stuff. And on the show, we talk about everything ranging from motion graphics to Cinema 4D, after Effects, plugins, render engines, doing business, doing taxes, being a contractor, or working for the man. And you can email us, info at MoGraph.com. Let us know what you think about the show. Could be anything from noob to super uh, super advanced. Doesn't matter what it is. We'll try and answer it or talk about Today's it. Today's show would be a good one for super advanced. True. Just true, saying. True. That's right. <laughs> it's episode 817. I'm sorry, not 817. I wish it was 817. No, it was 187. Actually, Eight, that's seven. the police code for murder in the mm -hmm. U.S. So <laughs> we're gonna kill this. You're show. gonna, be, gonna murdered. be murdered. You're gonna be murdered today with talent. Yeah, like the people. Right? <laughs> um, you wish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple things that we have on our week wrap up from last week. I wanted to just put out there that now officially on amazon we do have these new shirts on sale it's so dumb <laughs> it's, oh. that renders fire <laughs> so in case you want to look like the typical nice. uh the typical bot commenter on an instagram post you got it right there <laughs> and then um <laughs> also camp mograph updates do we have any updates the camp mograph today uh besides just buy, buy a ticket dang tickets it are still available uh, we've got them available. Um, I I think, nah, I don't know. I don't know if I want to announce that yet because we haven't talked all about oh, okay. that. Well, uh, but we do have yeah. some. Uh, we're it, we're probably this week, maybe next week, uh, going to push out an email announcing all the counselors. We're bringing in a bunch of uh, influential people within our industry to yeah. act as camp counselors for Camp MoGraph. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I think people Super are going to be very about excited about that for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So. And don't forget that the contest is still going on. If you would like to get a free ticket by winning the contest, or if you'd like to get the discount by entering the contest, yep. or if you'd like to just enter the contest, just to say that you're in our monkey legs music video, make sure you check that out. MoGraph.com forward slash monkey legs. And uh, I think we're going to talk about Ableton later on in the show as well. So that'll be fun. We? <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> um, okay. And one other thing I wanted to mention this week that I, I learned about the shortcut key for snapping windows in Windows, which is probably something everybody already uh, knows about. Yeah. But I always used to do that half and half screen thing and move my window <laughs> over and snap it. I didn't realize you could hit the Windows key and then hit like an arrow key and move it around where it needs to go. That's that's pretty dope. Yeah. Like that. Oh, yeah. So you hit like if you, have a, you have a already you have a if you have like a Rich, window you look like you want to try it right but like yeah. but you're worried about crashing crash Skype <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> hands going for it don't do it <laughs> yeah uh, Rick is asking in the chat where can I buy that shirt right now yeah I know I was I was just looking on Amazon I don't see it did you approve it uh yeah I believe I did approve it it should be on Amazon uh, uh, maybe I have to double check no I know I know it is. Um, I can look right now. I wonder if you type, well, here's the problem is you can't put the name of a website in the title of anything or it like rejects your, your apparel. So if you type MoGraph, hopefully it does. Well, the problem is you got the BroGraph shirt. Yeah. If you type MoGraph, it's the last thing that comes up on Amazon ah, for okay. me. That render that is fire. Is tea. fire tea. Yeah. Gosh. yeah. <laughs> so we'll have to have our shirts actually <laughs> listed on the site here pretty soon. I don't really have like yeah. an official place for that yet, but so we got the shirts. Uh, let's see. Oh, I see. It was a joke. It was a joke because Rick said, I believe oh. I said dope ass shirt. That's because I think that's because, you know, like yeah. that's what everybody writes on the comments and stuff. <laughs> gotcha. Anyway, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Anyway. I got a great idea for a video coming up here pretty soon. 
I haven't even told Matt about it, but yeah. What well, better it's time gonna than be now? Good. It's going to be good. Yeah. Just trust me. Just trust me. Um, all right, so not much in the week wrap-up. We got a lot of topics to talk about. First of all, I <laughs> wanted to just take us straight into Ravcock. What's your flavor? What's your flavor? So, <laughs> today, uh, Octane and Redshift stuff. Rich, you use both, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I probably yeah. maybe a bit more Redshift these days, but I yeah. still like have projects with Octane as well. So Are you yeah. uh, uh, are you still using V-Ray at all? No, I was... not really. Okay, no. I was going to say <laughs> I I when I talked to um uh what's his name? Hello Lux. Holy crap, I'm totally blanking. Tim Clapham. Tim, Tim Clapham. Clapham. <laughs> yeah. When I was talking to him at uh, uh, Siggraph or whatever, he was saying that you guys used V-Ray for the, the Sydney Opera House stuff. Is that right? A little bit. Um, this was like, so this would have been like just over two years ago, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And I think Tim, Tim still had like quite a big sort of PC, uh, CPU farm thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He had access to. And yeah, so we, there was some stuff we used, um, V-Ray on. Did a few tests with Redshift, but it was really early days then, so I, did, yeah. I was kind of hesitant to try and put it For through sure. that because it was also really big renders. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It did, yeah. it did work, but I was like, oh, if we get, if I, if I put the whole thing into this and it breaks at the last minute, it's going to be mm. awful. So, mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of that was done in V-Ray. Some was just done in standard renderer as well. Oh wow. So yeah, I mean, it was, it was kind of a case that it was a lot of the graphics were just like they would need to be super saturated because it was. On yeah, projection. of course. So it was more about like just the overall colors and the forms and things like that. So um, yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. We most used a bit of V-Ray, a bit of sort of physical. Um, I think that was it. Tim, Tim knows a lot more about it because he was sort of saddled with rendering the whole thing out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I helped out for a bit, then ran off. So. So when you spoke at Node, not last year, but the year before, I think 2017. Mm. Is that right? Or was it last yeah. year? Yeah, that's right. It wasn't last year. I missed Node last year because I was uh, visiting family back home, unfortunately. But um, yeah, it was the year before that. All right. So it's 2017. So, and you 17. talked a lot about Redshift at the time, which was yeah, yeah, yeah. the new hotness. <laughs> it was the, the yeah. new hotness yeah, at exactly. the time. Not to mention, you also did an entire training series on Redshift. <laughs> mm. Which kind of came out about that because, yeah, Tim... Tim was there at the time, and he was just uh, he said you should just try and do something for that. And so um, I was I agreed, but then I haven't recorded tutorials in such a long time. Um, mm -hmm. It took me like eight months to get around to doing it. But um, yeah, we started it, and yeah, it's been good. Yeah, I mean, so we that bought was all done we bought them. I, it's a oh, great awesome. tutorial series. It's a super great, great tutorial series. Yeah, you I'll go really in it. depth with it. So yeah, it's trying to sort of. I think I guess I got into. It just when it first came out, or mm -hmm. when it was still in beta, and so I was just mm -hmm. trying to sort of condense everything I'd learned in the last four years, I suppose, into like one thing. Um, yeah, so it was it's good. Hopefully, yeah, it's... gonna get another one out still. It's been a long time. I've been busy with work, but there is plans to hopefully get another um, volume or two out. So yeah, cool. So, see, I'm yeah, excited really to nice, learn about like... it because I'm like kind of into Redshift, but not totally, and I need I need to yeah. get the time in. And so um, yeah. I think Wednesday, uh, I think Matt's got a day off, so I'm going to do a quote unquote day off, <laughs> but sit there and, and yeah. try and learn a little bit more. So, oh, nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I was able to go through the whole first series in, in about a day, you know, cool. just going through and I had used it. I, I was on the beta as well. So I yeah. knew some of it, the, the thing that, that the thing that irks me the most about Redshift is dealing with alphas. Like, I hate that you have to split right. out the alpha yeah. somewhere else instead of just a simple click box. Like, I yeah, wish yeah, it was sure. just a, just use alpha, you know, yeah. or something like that. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, yeah. No, it's a bit of a pain that I don't, mm -hmm. I haven't actually done too much with alphas because I, I suppose most stuff I do these days is all sort of like fully CG. But yeah, mm -hmm. I know what you mean. I've done a few things where I'm trying to get like a clean alpha out of it. And it's like, oh, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, like bringing in uh, alphas as textures, you know, like right, doing sure. stickers or something like that yeah. and having to split yeah, yeah. those out. It's it's annoying. You know, yeah, it's kind of know. tricky as well. So. so what do you what would you say is your reason for using Redshift over Octane? Um, 
I think when I first when it first came out and there were like the demo videos of it, I was just what I liked about it was it was kind of like V-Ray and that you can set all your sort of samples and you can really get in there and sort of tweak your render settings. Mm -hmm. um, at the time with Octane, it was just kind of like you have the the number of samples you can set and there's a few other things, but it's kind of like as long as it takes is as long as it takes. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I started using it, it was just kind of the speed of it. Um, and I think for like for production work, it's really cool. I think it's also can be frustrating as well for a lot of users because if you're used to like the, the sort of snappiness of Octane's IPR, it's mm -hmm. not really the same system. Like it's not quite as snappy. Right. It's I think it's more powerful and you can do more with it and you can push it further. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's like people get frustrated because you don't have that. You don't always have that super instant feedback, I suppose. And hopefully over time, you know, it's going to get better and better. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. But yeah, for me, I think it was just the, the fact that I could just use it on like bigger shots and you could really get in there and sort of tweak things and the features i think when i got into it there was definitely more features and things you could do with redshift than you could with octane mm -hmm. so yeah it felt like it was a bit more my style the way that i'd kind of learned coming from sort what, of v-ray and physical and that sort yeah of i was gonna say right. your background was probably so uh, you did you did a tutorial and i i, I gotta thank you on this one because this was my first introduction really into fusion was your tutorial oh, that yeah. you did uh uh from C4D to Fusion or whatever, the the right, yeah. compositing in Fusion. It was excellent. Awesome. It was an excellent tutorial, you know, and so cool. it really helped me wrap my head around that. Um, I, I Do you do a, a lot of compositing uh, after, you know, a, a lot of compositing work after the fact? Not, not, a, not too much, to be honest. Like, I mean, a lot of my jobs, I suppose, are... Um either for studios, I would normally pass the, the files over to them and they normally do the compositing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't do a lot of comping myself. Um, maybe for like, if I'm just doing my own sort of little things and animations, it's useful. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't even I don't even use that many passes really these days. These days, it's mostly like maybe a depth pass, maybe some mats okay. and stuff. I don't often like bring everything back together and recombine the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's kind of... I don't think there's quite as much need for it these days mm -hmm. as there used to be. Yeah. Um, but it's still it's still like if you've got a big shot that's taking a long time, it's definitely worth putting out passes. So for sure. Yeah. Um but yeah, I, I kind of use it I use it I use Fusion sort of like for my own stuff, but I don't really use it for main jobs because mostly studios don't are mostly using nuke or after effects. So mm -hmm. yeah. That's still the thing <laughs> I think. It's a big is... difference between the two. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I know. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, after yeah. effects or nuke, you know. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Depends on the There's job. There's kind of nothing yeah, in between. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 and Fusion's good, but it's also, it's not got, like, the, the updates are kind of slow and it's not, yeah, mm -hmm. it feels, a, if, if it was really sort of, like, developed um, regularly, I think it could be really cool. But it's still, like, some stuff that's not quite um, perfect yet for maybe a full production thing. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you were using yeah, Fusion I'm, 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 in that video from uh, NodeFest, actually. You were showing that off. Mm, yeah. 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 Exactly. Like if I'm doing, if I'm doing like um, actually passes and things like that, I I definitely use it because I I really like just having the control of the way it sort of blends stuff together. Mm -hmm. um, and like you say, Nuke is just way too pricey for like a single freelancer. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Well, Chad Ashley Rad actually program. this week on uh, Twitter actually it might have been yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. What, what's today? No, two days ago, uh, on Twitter he said he asked, "Has Redshift become ubiquitous enough to where I can stop making material libraries for other <laughs> engines, or is that a big reason to like our material collection?" And I actually replied, and I was like, uh, "That's kind of the reason we like your collection because we can use it for whatever it is." And when yeah. clients come to us, we might not necessarily be able to use Redshift. So if it's like, "Oh, we need this yeah, one but particular," you have to also keep in you have to also keep in mind. I mean, what they're what he's doing with these collections is he's you know he's coming out of substance, mm -hmm. and then just creating you know your diffuse and your reflection maps, it's all just maps, you know, yeah, and right, how you use sure. them. He's just setting them up for you ahead of time. Yeah. You know, yeah. like for example, I bought, I, 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 I'm, I'm working on a, a project where we're using Thanos's head for an animation, <laughs> you know? Nice. And so like I went on TurboSquid to see if there was a, a, a model of Thanos, which there was, 
And so there was ones that were like $200 and then there was one that what? was $10. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> this one may be crap, but I'm going to buy it anyway. And it was all done <laughs> yeah. in Maya. You know, they had yeah. OBJs. They didn't have any C4D files, but I just brought in the OBJs and I was able to use all the texture maps and it still looked great. You know, it, yeah. was, it was fine. The reason Chad you know? is so doing that, like, though, is for a different reason. I guess there are specific right. nodes and maps inside of, I, I want to say, well, I don't know. I don't know if it's substance or redshift he's talking about. Ray switches, curvatures, UV transforms. Yeah. Is is that redshift he's talking about? See, I don't know redshift well enough yet yeah. to know. Yeah. That's redshift. Yeah, okay. I, I'm. I agree with what you're saying because it's like you can you can do so much with texture maps and substance, but if you want to say have like the curvature of the model, you it's like using the dirt in Octane. You know. Oh yeah, um, that's right. You that's can use right. the curvature node in Redshift, mm -hmm. um, but obviously that's specific to the render engine. So if you set that up. It's never going to be able to work in anything else right so yeah. i mean yeah. in that respect it would be interesting to have a pack for redshift because you could then use all these kind of nodes that are really sort of specific and can do that kind of thing but mm -hmm. it's definitely not going to be easy to kind of port that to say arnold or octane as well so yeah 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 i can definitely see his point though and why you might want to do that yeah no man yeah, you... i don't i don't know i would think me personally and you know i love chat i love the gsg guys but i mean they mm. want to focus on you know I, I would think that you wouldn't want to narrow your focus in sales to one specific audience. I think you'd want it to be as broad yeah, as true. possible. And I think people are looking thing. at that now because they're like, oh, Maxon, Redshift. So they're trying to figure yeah. out like... I'm, I'm sure yeah. there's a lot of talk about that too. Yeah. You know? Now, yeah. as far as Redshift the other day, you were telling me, Matt, that you had some slowdowns with... Uh, what was it? With... Um, Did I? Oh, with, uh, are you talking about the, passes, the crypto map oh, and the crypto puzzle map, that's and right. stuff like that? Yeah. yeah. What's it, the was, it was weird. Like, you know, uh, my renders were going like, you know, 15 seconds a frame. And then I added crypto mat and a couple puzzle mats and it jumped up to like a minute and a half. I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah. strange because in uh, one thing I like about Octane is you just click on crypto mat and, you know, takes no extra time. It's yeah. very nice. Yeah. For sure. Um, was it like the um? Is it like the end of the frame you were finding it, or like almost like it was I, writing it out, or? I don't know. I don't. I I don't know. I think it just took longer. You yeah. know, more the buckets went longer. I don't know. So yeah. so it actually it's true. okay. It wasn't finishing the buckets and then sitting there for like thirty seconds. Correct. Yeah. Oh. No, it mm. was just slower buckets. Weird. Yeah, I think I I I kind of I I mostly use like um puzzle mats passes mm -hmm. um but. Like Cryptomat is super useful and we've yeah. used it on a few jobs. But yeah, I think the more you add, like it does slow things down. Um, I'm not quite sure why that is. Um, I'm yeah. guessing it's something to do with the, the processing of it. But yeah, hopefully it's something they can figure out. I mean, you know, it's, it's it is annoying to add that on to your render time. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, for most of the time, like I can almost render out some of these things in standard renderer just using Luminant mats you know or right. illuminate materials faster than yeah. i can on some of these really. other things you know it's just like yeah all right yeah 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 depends on what you're doing so, yeah now as far as octane is yeah. concerned we had the old uh apple announcement last week and so yeah. everybody is talking about what they're going to do when it comes to the mac <laughs> platform to apple and all of that we will Bridge finally has to upgrade his g4 <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. Right. The old G4 in the background. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I it. <laughs> we will be talking about the Mac Pro Tower here in a second. But as far as Octane is concerned, um, there is going to be something called Octane X, and there will also be Redshift support for the Mac as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't have I don't have as much info from um, from Redshift in front of me at the moment, but as far as uh, Otoy is concerned. Um, he said that uh, Otoy is incredibly excited about the all new Mac Pro and how it will empower users. Octane X, the 10th anniversary edition of Octane, has been written from the ground up in metal for Mac Pro and is a combination of a long and deep collaboration with Apple's world class engineering team. Mac Pro is like nothing we've seen before in a desktop system. Octane X will be leveraging this unprecedented performance to take inner active and production GP rendering for film, TV, motion graphics, AR, VR to a whole new level. Octane X is truly a labor of love and we can't wait to get it in the hands of our Mac customers later this year. So there's a lot of talk about this now because 
I feel like while the Mac Pro Tower is getting a little bit of flack, as we'll talk about in a, in a bit, I think something yeah. that lessened that flack a little bit is the fact that Maxon, Redshift, Otoy, yep. everybody was like, they, they were preemptive in saying at the actual announcement no the, for those who are worried here's what's coming for render engines yeah it's like they yeah. really they thought about that so yeah i do think that i do think that's interesting you know i'm excited to see i i think that that definitely keeps the max in our industry alive for a little bit longer you know mm. and mm -hmm. uh it will now continue the mac pc debate for <laughs> a few more years right you know yeah. which is great cool. um uh, and I'm excited to see where it goes. I mean, honestly, if I had six to ten thousand dollars or thirty from what I've seen of the, you know, people talking online, I sure. If I had it just yeah. to throw away, I'd I'd buy one. You know. Yeah. How many? Um, I, I I only saw some of the presentation. Like, how many cards can you get in there if you're like fully specking it up? Like, what's the I equivalent? Think you know it's four. Right? I think you can fit up to four. Yeah. yeah. Four. Right. So that would but be like they're sort of all 28 ETIs or something kind of. A no, you, I don't. They can't oh. do NVIDIA. That's the big problem. Oh, like, but they'd have like right, something similar. Sorry. It's the AMD cards, you know, yeah. like they've got the no, fire. I don't not even fire know what Pro, they are. Something. Yeah, uh, it's uh, right. afterburner or something like that. Well, there's so also that these... card in there. There's that card that's going in there. That's like some secret. I don't know, some secret I think that's concoction the afterburner and, one. and that one allows you to do like x amount of 8k streams at once and all of that stuff yeah i don't know and people aren't even sure exactly It'll, what it is it's weird i think i i don't know I, I don't know if it's apple who's you know being a butt about it or nvidia who's being a butt about it you know but like if they could just get them on board i mean you'd have more people buying cards I, it would definitely be a selling point for me you know being able to get nvidia on but if you've got all these other then that goes over to the argument is if you've got all these companies who are getting on board with Mac and Metal and stuff like that, why do we even need NVIDIA anymore? You know? Yeah, true. I don't know. Yeah. So maybe NVIDIA might get a little bit worried. All I know is my mm. AMD stock has been going up like crazy for the past week. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> That's all that matters, really. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> yeah, Matt's going to have to like fully disclose every time we talk about AMD now. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Even though all he does is support NVIDIA most of the time anyway, but, you know, yeah. whatever. Uh, <laughs> so it'd be interesting to see how it compares when it comes out, like the actual sort of Oct Octane X compared to like a regular PC build of it. And if there's any yeah. kind of feature differences and stuff. But yeah, it sounds yeah, like because pretty they were interesting. showing off some of the like the uh, the comparable PCs, you know, yeah, sure. like, I, I mean, Okay, we get that. Yeah, once you're starting to get into the 28 core, you know, Intel machines and stuff like that. Yeah, you're looking at a super expensive machine, you know, yeah. but I, I know Apple always has a tendency to add that little, you know, that quite a bit of markup on it mm -hmm. because, yeah. you know, you're buying Absolutely. a pretty machine. Well, let's just go into yeah. this conversation then. Yeah, while we're, let's do it. <laughs> while we're talking about it, <laughs> I, I have some notes and and so like the highest end of this can possibly be like $35,000 or something to that yeah. effect, just depending on where you take yeah. it. And so there's been this whole question about like, is it worth it? And what is it going to make you switch well, back I mean, or, you know, do you need 1.5 terabytes of Ram? <laughs> you know, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you need do, it, do you sure. need it? Ne need I, or <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I'll always say, yeah, it. yeah, I'll take 1.5. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Is it fully say necessary? You have it. <laughs> there was a question that I no. answered in, in great detail on uh, Grayscale Gorilla's Facebook page the other day. And it was the way the question was worded, I think, is, is, is it powerful enough to get you to switch back? I'm like, powerful mm. enough really isn't the question. It, it's more about mm. like equivalency in price in the form of a pc which for me it's like is there really anything that the mac pro tower is doing that you can't do in a pc right now in some way shape or form I mean, it's all it's all yeah. it, it's all your apps and it's all the operating system i mean you're you're paying a premium for the operating system and if you like right. that operating system which i do you know yeah it, it's but it's not worth 
two to three thousand dollars for that operating system. For me, you know? even like exactly. the low level is yeah. six thousand dollars entry, and mm -hmm. I, I can build a fairly good tower for a little oh, over buy, two thousand yeah. dollars. So I'm like, so yeah. what you're saying is two to three times the cost is really worth it for the OS because that's what it comes down to for me. I love the OS, yeah, but like all the other stuff, Cinema 4D, Redshift, After Effects, Fusion any of the other things that you're going to use all look exactly the same so it comes down to yeah. the one or two programs and maybe hard mm -hmm. some hardware configuration but mostly again the os are you willing to pay thousands of dollars for a free os yeah yeah that's kind of that's kind of when <laughs> i swapped as well it was like i i loved using a mac and it was it was super hard to go okay i'm gonna swap to windows but mm -hmm. you know like the equivalent was it was it was a third of the price i think and i had double the power of whatever was in the yeah the, the stores at the time and it was like man it's yeah it's crazy and ej for example ej we we you know we talked <laughs> to ej won't ever get we up. talked to he ej ever about it all the time <laughs> we give him a yeah. hard time for it but but he did tell us something when we were in colorado which was you know i do these tutorials and i do a b and c every day plus he has the egpu box he's like mm -hmm. i don't really need the kind of firepower that a lot of other people need who are doing like these bulk yeah. octane renders and stuff like that and so for him it's mm -hmm. convenience and but at some point i think that's gonna disappear you know at some point it's gonna mm -hmm. be like do you really have to go out and get this and you know he actually asked and and he said something on twitter he said there's a major disconnect between the people who want to buy 10 20 80 ti's and love building pcs not understanding that mm -hmm. some creatives just want a rock solid stable system regardless of the sacrifice of that which i understand i completely understand that but he mm -hmm. says i don't want to be a part-time it person and there's also that stigma attached to pc you know because you know mm -hmm. people had problems with pcs back in the day and then you get apple and you say oh apple it just works and and now pcs yep. you still have problems with pcs but i don't have much more in the form of pc problems than Same I did here. Apple at this point. It's yeah. just being upset True. that they just don't have a good file explorer, really. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know? <laughs> <laughs> so um, so there were a bunch of responses on that, but Barton Damer's response, and this is something that he's been telling us, he's like, I've been trying to tell EJ he needs to switch, you know? Yeah. And this was his response, which is, it will affect you as an artist. Your ideas will be prohibitive if the software is not powerful enough to process and hit deadlines. Switching to PC three years ago has changed the entire traje trajectory of already been chewed. Um, we'd be doing explainer videos still on a Mac if we hadn't switched. So, yeah, but that's hmm. because that's because you were stuck within the past three or four years have mm -hmm. been hard. I mean, it's been mm. totally innovative. You're talking about, you know, entire new render engines that are built around completely different architectures and different computers, you yeah. know. Yes, Apple was behind on that for the past few years, but if they're going to build it back up, who's to say? Who knows? You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bill, Billy's in the chat. He's talking about me and EJ's Twitter beef. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I mean, I get the thing is with EJ, I get it. Like, I totally uh, get yeah. what he's saying. But also, mm -hmm. if he would just go through the switch, I think he would find that it's not as big of a deal as it seems like. <laughs> You know, because plus he's got a really supportive community around that is totally willing to like help him in any way, shape, or form. You know, to get it going too. I think he yeah, has a lot of true. crashes in Octane, and and we were talking mm -hmm. the other day. I'm like, I think that your crashes in Octane, honestly, are G are eGPU related. I I feel like eGPUs yeah, are just another mm -hmm. another point of failure in that system. But yeah, maybe. You know, I mm -hmm. I don't know. I get I get crashes with all the render engines. You know, yeah. some days yeah. I'll go, I'll go all day without getting any crashes on Redshift. And then all of a sudden it's like yeah. one after the next, after the next, same thing will happen with Octane, you know, it's whatever. Yeah. Oh, by the it's way. True. So, um, just, I, I wanted to give a little quote, uh, from Dave McGavran, the CEO of Maxon, when he was talking about Redshift, he said, we're excited to develop a Redshift for metal and we're working with Apple to bring an optimized version to the Mac pro for the first time by the end of the year, which is, Ooh. so that's exciting. Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, that's uh, that's a lot sooner than I had anticipated, you know, mm. I it's what, what he said by the end of the. OK, yeah, never mind. I'm getting my C4D and my 
Redshift confused. <laughs> right. Because I'm thinking, oh, well, SIGGRAPH's coming soon. R20, R23 uh, right. or whatever. Or what? Yeah. What? R twenty one. R twenty one. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited. I, I'm excited to see. Yeah. That. Rick says yeah. surprisingly, the base price of the new Mac Pro isn't the most expensive Mac ever. In eighty eight, the two FX started at basically ten thousand dollars. Yeah. But I I also think oh, that wow. you know yeah. back in the day their slogan was that it costs less and does more. That might have been costing less and doing more back then i don't know i don't know what the equivalent mm. was you know it could have been that a pc yeah. equivalent was more i, I don't know um and mm. uh matt stone said i've been using arnold on an old cheese grater and it's been the most stable third-party render experience i've ever had and mm. was thinking about switching to arnold all right i really like Man. arnold you know i mm. i was i was i'm kind of sad to see the gpus not really ready for you know production yet you know, uh, because when I, as I've used it, I, I really liked it. I, it's like the, uh, the, the quality of Arnold is so similar to Octane and the fact that it's like super realistic, you know, Yeah. Sure. but then you also get all the joy that comes with working with Redshift where you get, you know, the AOV passes and stuff like that. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I was really hoping that it would be a lot better, but there's yeah, give it time whatever yeah. yeah i haven't tried the gp version of uh arnold actually I, I used arnold on a job once but i haven't mm -hmm. like dug too deeply into it but it is yeah it's, it's super cool it was just the the sort of speed issue that was always for me yeah same with the v-ray though and all that sort of gpu stuff if you've got enough processors it's it's fine or if you've got a farm right right exactly yeah. what would make you, you know, switch I, back i guess is the you know like like what would you to, <laughs> to a mac yeah yeah, to, to if someone a Mac, handed if it... me a Mac, oh man, you oh, know, yeah. if someone handed me a fully a fully you know <laughs> decked out Mac, absolutely, that would become my main machine, hmm. and my two PCs would just be render nodes. Well, let's you say know? it was time to buy a new machine right now, mm -hmm. and you you had to buy a PC, but then Mac came along with something for the exact same like it is it exact, the exact same, same price? price with the exact same specs. Yeah, yeah totally, I'd buy a Mac. I would. Yeah. Mm. There's I don't think there's any question about it. You know, the fact that I, I think it's going to be interesting to see is once uh, everything moves over to metal, like, you know, once you've got Redshift and Octane and all these other ones working with metal, like if there's going to be any speed decrease specifically because of it. Yeah, right. You know, like because you can do, I don't know, you can do, you can do cycles on you know, a AMD machine or a NVIDIA machine or whatever, but is it going to render at the exact same, you know, time? You know, I mean, yeah. are you going to have comparable GPUs in both machines and they're going to run at the same rate? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know, you know. That'll and be also if you were like, also the whole thing about if you're rendering, say you were rendering half a sequence on one machine, half a sequence on the other, do you get any right. visible absolutely. Like, right, absolutely. noise issues or anything like that? It's yeah. another thing that's kind of a bit of I a mean, worry. I mean, we run you know? into issues rendering Octane sometimes just in uh, with different cards, yeah. you know? It hasn't yeah, been lately, no. but I, I, you know, uh, mm. a, a year or so ago, you'd have some mm -hmm. that were running uh, 1080 Ti's and some that were running 980 Ti's, and they'd give you a completely different image. You know, it's not so. Yeah, I, th I haven't heard of it for a while, but yeah, it used to be something I think would come up quite a lot on. Yeah, yeah, sort of Twitter and stuff like that, and Slacks and things. So yeah, yeah. we would have slightly different builds, slightly different cards. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, between like a 970 and 980, but that was a little while ago. I haven't run into that issue in a while. But um, Evan asked if the Mac supported NVIDIA cards and the price was still the same. How would you feel? And like if I were buying Ooh, a car, that's a good question. If I were well, if I were question. buying a computer and it was exactly the same right now, I would do it. But it's not like if it came out right now, I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go buy it because I don't need a computer right now. That's the problem. Yeah. We everybody yeah. just switched, so <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> I think if it had been a couple of years ago when I'd just come off a Mac, maybe I would, but I've been using PC for maybe five years now, I suppose. Four years maybe. And it's yeah, I, I kind of don't really miss it anymore i suppose um, yeah. i used to love working in max but yeah it's kind of uh, it's a while ago now so i've kind of switched i don't know if yeah. i'd go back 
I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think especially, I could. especially with the price point. But yeah. yeah. They are I... they are nicely built for sure. Like yeah. they look great and stuff. Did you guys see that uh, GIF of someone? So you know how you can use the AR lens or whatever and put your the Mac Pro on your desk and see how it'll look? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> so someone was was riding the train and had their the AR thing out the window, and like <laughs> the Mac was just going along as they were going awesome. along. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, um, there was a ton of memes, of course, about the stand for the monitor. I do think that's a little ridiculous. Yeah, a thousand dollar stand. A thousand dollars. Yeah, for a piece of aluminum. The thing is, you're gonna have a lot of these studios who are just like, we don't care. We've got money. You know, we're gonna buy these. We're gonna buy these really nice monitors. I mean, what's the I what's mean, the price point? Payroll, a... You know, right. Let's not give yeah. everybody a raise. Why don't you give right. every person a thousand dollar raise instead of giving them a thousand dollar stand? Right. Uh, you know, mm. just saying. I wonder who'll be the first person. I wonder who'll be the first company to make like their third party stand. That oh, I already told Dave we and... need to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, said. Exactly. I said we could just hire a Chinese company to like yep. you know build it all out of aluminum and yep. sell it for like. Yeah. 50 bucks or 100 mm -hmm. bucks yeah. online dude i guarantee would be, you there's yeah. there's 100 people right now going to alibaba and doing deals to make to make a, a cheap version of the stand and throw it on amazon already totally. you already yeah. missed the boat matt yeah that's <laughs> funny billy said do you want a 32 core amd chip or a single monitor stand yeah <laughs> <laughs> the the memes are just running crazy i've been saving a bunch of them but uh man yeah that's but but here's the thing when you look at that stand for example and and you take that mentality that they have toward the stand and you apply that to the computer it makes you think okay how much of this computer is absolutely just completely overpriced you know how yeah. many components of this I mean, are that's, that's kind of the way they've always been you're paying yeah. a premium for mac you know, mm. and you understand that about a Mac, you know, yeah, but I don't know. Now, Whatever. a lot of You're... people had said, OK, maybe this is the time that we can think about doing Hackintoshes again. Yeah, mm. Hackintoshes are always so there's it's like it's like getting an eGPU. There's always something that you got to there's some sort of work around or mm -hmm. you can't update your drivers or something like yeah. that. Well, Rich, you you've know? done Hackintoshes, right? Yeah, I built one. I, the first time I moved from like a Mac was through a Hackintosh because I, I still wanted to stay with like the operating system, but mm -hmm. it was just the, the cost of updating was like I can get a better, you know, I can get a better system for less. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and um, there was that website Tony Mac still going I think, but they they post those like builds every six months or so, and as long as you follow along with the parts, you can build your own computer. But I mean, it worked fine, but it was just. The worry of like you know if if something goes wrong you've got to fix it yourself and yeah yeah you know it may it yep. may not be something you can fix and especially if you're like you're trying to use it on a job like at the time it wasn't oh really working, yeah but man you would be so stressed like if something goes down with this or um and i never updated it like it, it literally was the same operating system that i installed and i was like there's not a hope in hell this is ever gonna update and not <laughs> break so <laughs> that's funny yeah yeah, I mean it was cool, but it's. It, I feel like it's it's definitely for more people who enjoy, like the hobby part of building PCs, because you need to have that kind of mentality and yeah, like drive to build it to make it work. So yeah, yeah. I went and did some freelance work at a company that had like three Hackintoshes, and one of them yeah. never worked. Like yeah. they're just like, oh yeah, we can't get this one to work. It's like, mm. all right, yeah, you know. yeah. I mean, Great. my Wi-Fi card never worked. That was one thing. It was like, I, I no idea mm -hmm. why. It just doesn't, didn't work. I can never get it working. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that was a simple thing that doesn't really matter too much. But yeah. I mean, worst case, you can always install Windows over the top and you could use it as a Windows PC. Yeah. But then yeah. that was the whole point of you trying to build this thing <laughs> in the first place. So yeah, yeah. especially <laughs> with the specific like uh uh hardware yeah yeah yeah, yeah. exactly you gotta have very specific motherboards, very specific. Yeah, yeah. everything has um, to be. And worse yet, like over here in New Zealand, like parts are so hard to, well, not, they're not too hard to come by, but after a couple of months, it's hard to find stuff. And mm -hmm. I was, mm -hmm. I was having to shop between different stores. Like I need to buy this, but this other store has it and hopefully they won't sell out while I'm buying this one. So, oh geez. man, oh, man. Yeah. It was stressful, <laughs> but it worked. And I was like, man, yeah. phew. but I wouldn't do it again. I don't think. 
Yeah, Glenn says in the chat, you there. know, that it's like the diehard BMW owners. You know, they're never going to switch from yeah. BMW, even if you, you know, yep. have to take the car into the repair place in order to just, you know, yep, change the it's oil. A Jeep owner too. Can't even do I'll that. Never get a, I'll never get yeah? it. I'll never have another car except for my mm -hmm. Jeeps. You know, <laughs> I'm on my third Jeep now. You know, hmm. the, the next car I get will either be a Jeep or a Tesla, depending on how much money I have at the time. <laughs> right. I know. So. See how those shares do, hey? Yeah, right? Right. <laughs> All on those AMT shares. Right. It's funny. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but in your in your recording of tutorials and stuff too, have you have you noticed um, to to jump back to Redshift for a second? Have you have you noticed that mm. uh, you've had any uh, any issues with like things being? How do you deal with things being outdated or, or changing? Or because because that's that's a big problem, especially with Redshift, because like these updates come out really quick. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, the so fun like, of I tutorials. Mean... <laughs> I know, but it's it is pretty much. I guess Redshift is the worst because they move so quickly. There's yeah. new stuff out all the time, mm -hmm. um, and the plan the plan was to try and as I do new volumes to try and update at least the most important things that have changed. Um, mm -hmm. Being that there's been a fair few months now between the last one, that's also going to be a fair challenge. But um, plus version three, yeah, plus yeah. version three as well. So <laughs> yeah, I know it's um, yeah. But hopefully the idea is that. In the next volume potentially i could go over some new stuff but then also potentially go over like some of the changes as well and things that are, are now new um yeah it's just staying up to date with software it is it is tough i mean even even same with octane like i i used octane three point whatever four for a while then i upgraded to four and then so much of that was different and i haven't even got onto the subscription thing so i'm sure it's changed again mm -hmm. um yeah it's I guess it's just part of being what we do is you know trying to stay up to date with the latest stuff. Um, yeah. Time job, hey. <laughs> yeah. How's the uh, how's the the MoGraph scene in Auckland? Yeah. How big is Auckland? Um, it's not huge. Um, but it's it's like a small city, but it's actually pretty good now. I mean, for work, it's the budgets aren't huge, and mm -hmm. but there's more studios popping up that are doing more interesting work than say when I got here like 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, and when I came here, like I was trying to find other 3D people and other MoGraph people mm -hmm. and it was near impossible. Like I'd be looking on Meetup and things like that. And there were lots of web developers and flash developers, but nothing for like animation or 3D. Mm -hmm. um, but then uh, my buddy Blair actually started like a, a group. Uh, a for few a video podcast? Ago. Blair? Exactly. That one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that. You we guys love have been Blair on there, Walker. haven't you? He's yeah. great. Blair's awesome. He's a super yeah. cool guy. I saw um, a tweet the other yeah, day so he... that said there might be some new shows coming soon or something. Is that right? Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He's um he was freelance for a while and he was super busy. And now yeah. he's um he's got a, a great full time job again now and he's I think it's giving him some more time for sort of like focusing on things he wants to do. So the podcast is coming back as well, which will be Good. awesome to That's hear. exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he basically started organizing this thing for Auckland and it's actually quite a nice community now growing up. So, um, yeah, we've got maybe about 40, 50 like users that will come along to the meetups and stuff. We try and do one every couple of months, I think, depending on how busy people are, but yeah, it's, it's awesome. That's super cool. It's yeah. definitely not as big as like, say like over where you guys are or in the UK or even Australia. Yeah, but like, like but honestly, it's growing. Dallas, where we're at, there's not a very big scene. You know, yeah. most yeah. of the people who come to our meetups are like producers or something like that. You yeah. know, we'll mm -hmm. get some good, some uh, we'll get some After Effects people, we'll get some yeah. cinema people. You know, yeah. But uh, That's yeah, well, you guys are so spread out, isn't it, over the states? It's, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dave and I are an hour. It's a it's a two hour round trip to go to his house and back. Yeah. Man. So and we live in the same area <laughs> technically. And we live in the same yeah, the yeah. same area. Jeez. Yeah. I could fly to the South Island and back for that. So, yeah, <laughs> I, can, I can imagine that's a that's, that's a journey. So here's um, a yeah, I, uh, oh sorry go no go uh, ahead. I mean I was just gonna say you know it, it seems like New Zealand uh, 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 and Australia are becoming this big hub for motion graphics. You know yeah, at least it has yeah, been yeah. over the past like you know five to ten years like it's just mm -hmm. grown exponentially. Yeah. It's cool to see like more of that stuff starting to come out over here. Um, I don't know why. I guess it's maybe. I guess maybe it's things like 
just the time it's taken for people to sort of adopt it. Um, mm -hmm. Like I say, when I first came over here, it was pretty much just design jobs and maybe simple um, animation stuff. But yeah, in the last few years, it seems to have really sort of started to take off. So it's really cool to see that for sure. Um, and I think maybe Australia was probably a little bit um, ahead of it for a while anyway, but mm -hmm. certainly in New Zealand, it feels like it was a little bit slow to pick up, but it's definitely moving um, faster now. I think there's de there's definitely more work available for like if you're if you can do 3D and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's just I'm a, I'm assuming you don't just do work in New Zealand, you know. No, uh, actually, uh, to be honest, a lot of it's mainly uh, overseas, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This time, um, yeah, I used to work for a company here in Auckland uh, called Bunker. Um, mm -hmm. I actually share a desk there now as well, so I'm kind of back in that studio. So it's awesome to be hanging out with those guys again. Um, but yeah, I do a lot of work overseas mainly. Um, it's a few things. I've just finished a job uh, a couple of weeks ago with a company here in Auckland called Darkroom, but they're mm -hmm. a couple of hours north. So you'd have to drive for two hours north to get there. So that was working remotely, but still within yeah. New Zealand. So yeah, but um, yeah, I feel I, there's still, I think it's still as a freelancer, I think it's still possibly a struggle to work within New Zealand only. Uh -huh. um, yeah, can you imagine. can get work. It's just, yeah, if, if you can sort of get contacts overseas and you can start getting those sort of connections, it, it helps a lot. It's It would certainly be hard for me if I was just working in New Zealand because, yeah. yeah. yeah, And I think potentially if you're doing After Effects, maybe there's more work for that kind of thing, but sort yeah. of like 3D, things like that, because it's so expensive generally anyway, sort of 3D. Now, what's the, what's the, there's a lot of, Okay, so I've I've heard that a lot of uh, uh, production studios are moving a lot of their productions over to New Zealand. You know, I think it was the big push from Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. That uh, uh, I, I want to say they were talking about this with the whole Rhythm and Hughes stuff when Rhythm and Hughes had just won mm. uh, uh, for Life of Pi, and they were talking about how they were outsourcing a lot of their VFX work out to mm. uh, New Zealand. I don't know. I could be wrong. I'm not sure. No, I mean, I don't know too much about the VFX side of things. Um, mm -hmm. I used to do that a long time ago, but I think I've been mostly doing just motion, 3D sort of motion design since I've been over here. But yeah, I mean, it sounds it sounds likely. I mean, a lot of it, I think a lot went to Vancouver as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically I lumping you into one group of person, yeah. one group of people because you live yeah. in. A yeah, you know everybody yeah. that lives there, <laughs> yeah. right? Exactly. You know, yeah, we're exactly. from Texas. We ride horses everywhere we go, yeah. you know. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, so no, uh, I guess uh, okay. I I still have a redshift question. I I'm I'm dying to, to answer <laughs> at this point. I'm just gonna I'm just going right back to red. I keep going back to redshift, right? Uh, no, okay. If I am, I guess if if I'm me, I guess, and and mm -hmm. either of you could probably answer this question, and and I want to really like kind of come back around to my dive into redshift starting Wednesday. Uh -huh. Okay. Should I do the beta or not the beta? Of three? Yeah, isn't there a beta three. right now? You can get the beta, right? Yeah. Correct? I would. Or no? I would. I personally, I would say maybe not yet because yeah. it's, it's, it's still pretty new and they're going to be rolling out features, I think, in the coming months. Mm -hmm. And the moment it's maybe, I think the one thing perhaps at the moment is trace depth is much higher in this one. I think yeah. it goes up to the full 64 now. Yeah. Um, I haven't actually installed the beta yet because I was just like, oh, I'll just give it a few weeks or months and see how it goes. Yeah, and you may run into um, uh, stability issues and stuff like that. Right, yeah. You know, and that's no fun to learn on. Yeah. You know? no. I mean, if it's really bad, I understand. But like some a part of me was like, well, you know, it's not like it has to be production ready. I'm just... Yeah, you but know. I think yeah. it's it's like version, you know, going from version three to version four of Octane. You know, yeah, you get a few more things to do. That's what Billy's but saying. It's, it's not yeah. a huge difference. Yeah. Billy, you know? Billy says yeah, there's nothing exactly. new and groundbreaking in 3.01 yet. So yeah. I'll, just, yeah. I'll just hold yeah, it yeah. And plus, it probably makes tutorials a little more complicated to follow if things are maybe slightly different. For sure. Or, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, and uh, Billy does say, say the RTX is on, but that's not yeah. going to change your learning curve. Oh, that yeah. makes sense. True. Yeah. 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 I don't think it'd be vastly different. Like if you did install it, like you wouldn't, it's not like you couldn't follow along because most of the things are still in the same place, but it's, yeah, just, yeah, up to you. I, I think Hon I'd probably leave it for like, now. 
to me, these render engines are all about uh, uh, learning the nodes, you know, and what they do. And yeah. like, because it, it's all about theory, you know? So like, yeah. you know how you would do something in Octane. So just do it the exact same way in Redshift. You just need to know which node is the corresponding node, you know? Yeah. Exactly. And for the um, for ninety percent of what you do, that's you know that's it. You just need to ha figure out how to get those nodes to work together. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> well, to switch gears a little bit, and I think Ben asked this question in the chat quite a ways back. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about transitioning over to Houdini a little bit because I'm really interested to hear about how that's been going for you <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure um so i've yeah i've been recently trying to get into houdini um I, I guess i've been using it for a while like a lot of people where you just use it for a particular thing um mm -hmm. like say doing a like um, a fluid sim or a smoke yeah. sim and things like that um but i guess for the last eight months or so i've been sort of trying to see if i can sort of just work completely in houdini like learning more of the basic mm. stuff like cameras, lighting, um, animation, that sort of thing. Even modeling? Um, yeah, even modeling, actually. Wow. Um, I mean, it, it kind of came from, which, yeah, we'll come back to that because that's kind of an interesting <laughs> thing, too. Um, I guess it came from, like, um, I think there was a job I did two years ago, and it was, like, um, it was, like, visualizing the human spine. And it was just going to be, like, a model rendered in Redshift, that kind of thing. And then at the last minute they were like oh we also need to do all the um nerves and the veins inside the spine as well so i was thinking initially well you could do x particles for example but i also thought it's going to need to be quite well art directed in terms of how those nerves are being laid out and mm -hmm. doing things sometimes with a sim like x particles or any particle system is kind of like herding cats so trying to get things to work in the yeah. right way um so i'd basically i'd, I'd come across a load of tutorials for Houdini, like things like uh, volume trails, and uh, find shortest path, I think, which can sort of generate all these paths for you as just like a, a single process. Um, and that actually worked really, really well. It was really nice to work in, but still I had, the problem was going between Houdini and Cinema 4D because although it was really quick to calculate, I'm still like transferring these four or five gig Alembic caches back into Cinema. Mm -hmm. And I was also trying to work between my work office and my home office through Dropbox. So Jeez, yeah. yeah, I was just thinking, I was just thinking like, if I just knew how to light and animate in Houdini, this would be so much more straightforward in a way. For um, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I, I kind of like, yeah, eight months ago, I just sort of started with the basics and just sort of thought what it would be like if I could just get things going inside of Houdini. And um, yeah, it's been good. It's, 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 it's obviously initially it's super hard. Like there's a lot, there's a lot of new stuff to kind of deal with um but it's also a lot more i think it's a lot more artist friendly than it oh no uh, we lost them you opened up the chat right <laughs> oh me oh there you are oh we, I we got you, you back we got yeah you we back. lost you just oh, for a second hang on no what happened Let's keep the on still there. rolling um okay. yeah so it's just yeah I, I found it really useful for just like just trying to learn the sort of um pipeline stuff and just how you can sort of cache things and yeah, as you were saying, even like modeling, like it's not something you typically think you'd mo want to model in. And I don't think it would be for everyone, that's for sure, because uh, you are laying down a lot of nodes. But at the same time, yeah. it's quite cool to have your entire modeling history like available to you. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as you're grouping stuff, it's actually not too bad because um, modeling is traditionally fairly destructive. Like you get to certain bits where you're like, OK, I've got to I've got to merge this down now. Right. And maybe work on the next bit. So you save a copy and then maybe half an hour later you realize you need to go back to that one, but then you have to redo everything again. So having like every sort of step of your model kind of available to you, is pretty cool if you can go back to the beginning and say clone something onto yeah. like an earlier part. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and you'd think it'd be slow, but it's actually pretty, well, like you think cause you get has to generate all the stuff again, but it's mm -hmm. very smart with the way it caches stuff. So like once you get to the end, you've still got all your history, but you know, it still plays back in, super fast real time so that's something that i've 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 really i've found mm. with houdini that i really like like yeah. just playing around with it a little bit just doing some of the tutorials where it's like you know simple smoke 
simulations yeah. or fracture simulations or something, but it's like it load it it plays really fast in comparison. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, like you can tweak yeah. a whole bunch of different settings, uh, uh, and it'll still play back relatively quick in comparison to say working in another program, and tweaking those exact same things. It'll just kind of chug a little bit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I mean, once you've cached it once, it's like, oh, now I can actually watch this real time, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I would say, I mean, when you do get to do more and more complicated stuff, it can get very slow as well, but sure. like any 3D program. Yeah. But um, what's kind of cool about it is it, I think it ca each each of the sort of like different nodes in the in the graph, it, it kind of caches the geometry at that level. So once mm -hmm. it's cached, it's almost like you've baked it down to polys, say in Cinema 4D. So everything's kind of nice and fast with that thing. So yeah. Yeah, um, I'm really liking it. And it's, I think, like, using it as a 3D package, like, once you get into it, it's not actually that hard. Um, mm -hmm. It's I, I haven't gone into, like, all the details of things like the Vellum solvers and that sort of stuff and the, mm -hmm. all the simulation things, because they can sort of come back to that later. But it's been quite cool just for, like, getting used to how I can use it as a 3D pack for just, a 3D package, sorry, for just, like, lighting, um, cameras, animation, and that sort of thing. And I'm, and I'm since assuming you're using Redshift or, yeah. you know. So that was, and that was the so other thing. It's <laughs> very similar yeah. in the way, you know, for all the settings of your lights and your cameras and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, like that's the beauty of it. I think it probably would, I probably wouldn't have got into it as much if it wasn't for the fact that I already knew Redshift. And it's it's almost the same. I mean, there's the sort of the interface is different, but everything else works exactly the same. So it's it's cool. And um it's even in some ways it's more powerful because you can, you know, you can have your own sort of custom attributes that you can add to geometry that you can't right. really do in Woody right now, but you can like wire those into shaders. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of an interesting learning curve. Billy it's, has a question in the chat. A while. He's wondering if like mm. that ceiling of, oh, okay, this is complex and now it's heavy and slow, you know, is it, is it higher in Houdini versus something else or is it like, or is does it feel about the same? Or does like, it feel like it can a handle bit more, more at it? Yeah, at Houdini. I, th I, I think so. Like, I mean, um, like if you're doing super simple stuff, maybe C4D is a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, I think it's more manageable when it gets heavier. And also, yeah. like the caching in it's really good. Like you can you can just throw down a file cache at any point and just cache your geometry out to disk and then read it straight back in. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And it's all like completely linked up still. So you go back and change anything. You can just recache. And that's kind of the beauty right. of it because it's everything's mm -hmm. kind of super easy to kind of uh, yeah. access still. And certainly for things like um, design, like research and development sort of stuff, if you want to have multiple variations, it's super easy to go back and just change like little things earlier sure. on. And you can get, yeah. I've got yeah. another guy, another friend of mine who uses it like full time and he finds it great for... Um, just that thing alone because you can create like 50 variations of something and mm -hmm. try that out and see how it works so yeah yeah like i say it's not for everyone i think i think yeah if you're doing like if you just need to get out some style frames quickly it's it's probably easier to do it in c4d and there's still mm -hmm. a fair big learning curve like i'm sure yeah. you've seen the learning curve of yeah. different 3d <laughs> software and I've, houdini I think I've is opened, like the cliff yeah. i have <laughs> opened houdini six times before, yeah. six times and played around with it like for like a couple hours each time before i yeah. finally understood it a little bit yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. you have to I'm the, I'm the same honestly it was like it was like learning zbrush i think for me like uh -huh. um it wasn't till i le tried learning zbrush for the fifth time that i finally sort of started to understand it and i think yeah. it's kind of the same thing in a way for houdini yeah um yeah, but I mean, it is, it's pretty awesome for sure. Um, I'm really excited about sort of getting into more stuff using that um, and the sort of the ability in a way just to be able to, you can almost like make your own plugins with it. Like yeah. you can yeah. create, you've got some, such, everything's no, like so modular that you can just do kind of crazy little sort of connection. Like right. for example, a good example would be you could have a particle sim and then you could, while it's still live, you can select points and you could move some over there and scale them down. You could select other points and delete them, and you could mm -hmm. say smooth the whole lot, which in other apps, it's quite hard because the particle system is just a single thing, and you can't yeah. really access the individual points of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah. in Houdini, anything's just open, so it's like, just do what you want. So 
Yeah, right. yeah. Grant says in the chat cool. that you can push Houdini way further before it breaks. Mm. Um, I think so, yeah. What would you say the hardest thing to get over in Houdini was compared to cinema? Like, that, just the hardest part about oh. it for you, to really just push to, to get to that point where I you think... felt a little more comfortable. Yeah, I think one thing is maybe just all the number of nodes you have available to you initially because it's there's so many nodes it's mm -hmm. almost overwhelming and mm -hmm. and you know you can do everything but you just need to know what those combinations are right so in that respect it was trying to sort of figure out um like say a something i'm used to doing in cinema 40 how do i replicate that in Houdini. Same thing that I was talking about takes, with Octane yeah, to Redshift, it, you know? Yeah. It totally is. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's uh, That's what's taken the time. Um, and and some stuff is like harder, like things like doing spline wraps are actually fairly tricky in Houdini. Like you have to pretty much come up with your own solution. Although mm -hmm. you can download like uh, digital assets that do that now. But yeah, there's some, there's some stuff that I love about it and there's some stuff that's just like oh maybe this would be quicker in c4d but mm -hmm. i think it's all part of the process but yeah i think i think just sort of like trying to understand like what all the nodes do and how you can sort of apply that to the workflows that you already do because essentially you get much slower when you try and learn a new software for a mm -hmm. while but it's just trying to get through all that initial mess of <laughs> how do i do this for sure it's funny, I'm watching yeah. on the video, you know, comparing, I'm on a green screen with light, with, you know, real, like, you know, real fake lights. So it, it's, it's not, it's not changing here, but it's really funny to watch because it's getting brighter where you are, Rich, and it's getting darker yeah, where it's getting you darker are. getting darker where we are. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about that, yeah. that's funny. Um, I've got the sun coming round through this window and it's going to get yeah. the same. Yeah. You're so far <laughs> in the future. Um, <laughs> The um, okay, so the thing you were saying about the comparison that you were making, and like Matt, you were saying with Houdini, you've got mm -hmm. this program that you open like six times, yeah, and then you try it a little it's... bit each time, and every time it it makes a little more sense. I I can compare that incredibly to like opening Ableton, mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. in I don't know, like in Logic and some of these other programs, they're pretty straightforward in what they do, multi-track recording, mm. whatever, right? But when yeah. you, yeah, like Logic, Logic and Audition, Logic and Audition are pretty much the okay. same in a way when it comes down to it. But when yep. you open Ableton, it's just different enough where it's been kind of, over the years, kind of hard for me. Like I'd mm -hmm. open it up, eh, okay, whatever, I kind of understand it or this doesn't make sense, and the next time I try it again, and it just gets a little bit better each time. Um, yeah. I think it's a good comparison. I think there's a lot of that. Uh, and when I um, sat down with Houdini Mark, and we were talking about his course, that's that's going to come out on Houdini, um, I said, I don't know anything about Houdini, but I know what the title of your, of your class needs to be is Stop Being Afraid of Houdini. And so I have <laughs> yeah. just started like going through the footage and starting to edit this uh class that's going to come out in the fall and i'm so super excited about it like like oh, nice. it's going to mm -hmm. be great that's going to be it's going to be it's going to be it, fire it's... yo fire oh my gosh <laughs> the uh uh so this is something that uh nose man said to us it, it was one of the first times we really hung out with nose man at nab a few years ago where yeah. we were talking about houdini and he said with houdini you don't you don't gradually learn more about houdini it's like mm -hmm. you you get a concept or something and then you go exponentially up. It's like you take yeah. steps. Stair step like and keyframes. Large stair steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel that that's super true. Yeah, it's in, sort of. In, yeah. Yeah. I, Instead I of just like the last gradually few months, it's kind getting of got really... smarter and smarter in Houdini, it's like, yeah. okay, I get this concept. Now I can move on to much more. You know, I understand right. so much more of the, the, yeah. the, the, yeah. the software. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's the kind of the the whole idea with Houdini is that everything's kind of like it's just lots of um attributes on points and it's uh, it's almost like a it's basically like a visual <laughs> programming language. That's hilarious. A nose man hey. just shows up. <laughs> a you say his, a rogue you know, nose man appears three times nice. in a mirror in a dark uh yeah. a dark oh room. Oh my gosh, see <laughs> that's the problem. We all Candy yeah. man. <laughs> that's funny. Uh yeah, um 
so I, I completely get that. Like, like there have been so many moments that I have worked on a fairly large project and felt like all of a sudden my keyframes have stepped up, you know, it's yeah. not a lin it's not linear yeah. or, or yeah. anything like that. It's like, it's totally mm. stair step and keyframes on your it, learning yeah, curve. Yeah. It's like you, you understand the concept and it's like, oh, okay, I can apply that to so much more. I know. Kung you know, yeah. Yeah. I know Kung Fu, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's funny. But, um, all right. So, so, uh, before we move on to something else, okay. I, well, mm. I mean, are we moving on to something else? We're about else? to, yes. That... Okay. See, I, I really wanted to talk to Rich about his, his background. Yeah. Yeah. You know? totally. Because, uh, uh, I, I think you have, you're one of probably a handful of people in this industry who has created a style that is very specific to you, you know, and, and so many people are emulating your style, mm -hmm. you know, like you've got EJ, EJ does the sketch and tune stuff, the, the cartoony, yeah, you know, sure. take an yeah. inanimate object, put eyes and a mouth on it. That's EJ yeah. style. <laughs> you know, you've got Beeple, you've got, you know, these desolate yeah. landscapes with a giant, you know, uh, uh, glowing orb or whatever. And it. that's Person Beeple, for scale, you know, and then, yeah, person for scale. <laughs> yeah. And then you've got your stuff, which is very, it's, it, it's, I don't know how to explain it exactly. It's like these almost pastel yeah. colors with awesome textures. That's the textures wooden I love. Textures yeah. and stuff mixed with a, like a, a, some like machinery looking like robotic esque <laughs> stuff. It's, it's such an interesting style. Like, how did you, how how in the world would you did you I like to me i'm thinking pastels and wood don't go well together you know yeah but when you when you do it it's like oh that's beautiful yes <laughs> you know that makes sense it's, oh, it's almost so like you um, created an entirely new design style that is being emulated across you know multiple platforms now Wow, shit. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, no, it's like it's it's kind of funny to hear because over in New Zealand you feel so far away from everything else. So that's yeah. awesome to <laughs> awesome to awesome to hear, man. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think I mean my background was I came from VFX and like initially when I started learning it was very sort of um, not really design based at all. It was just about like learning modeling or learning UVing and mm -hmm. very sort of rigid concepts, I suppose. Um, I think a lot of my works often come out of maybe just trying to learn things and then that goes off on a tangent. Um, but in terms of like the style, um, yeah, I don't know. I think I, I'm really into sort of like quite detailed, like mechanical things as well. But I also really love like sort of um, materials, um, interior mm -hmm. design, architecture, that kind of stuff. Um, okay. Okay. And yeah. I've always, I've always just I'm found it interesting when you can sort of blend those things together mm -hmm. yeah um, when i when i got into sort of like 3d and cinema like many years ago and i started getting into v-ray what i really loved was the fact that you could have these sort of realistic like lighting setups that you mm -hmm. know you could you could mix say architecture and just some crazy stupid pattern but you know it could still feel like it's sort of grounded maybe in the real world yeah um and i think it's just kind of gone off on a tangent from there really i Sometimes I'm always just like, sometimes I do stuff and I'm just like, this looks stupid. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> I, it, there's, there's a lot of projects that have gone in the, on the hard drive bin and, you know, probably may never get finished because I, I start a lot, but don't finish all that many. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's a lot of it's just sort of like following like what you're interested in. And I, I really like vivid colors and things like that. And I mm -hmm. also really love sort of like super dark like machinery and architecture and things. And yeah, anytime I can sort of combine those two, whether it works or not always, is kind of good for me. But I yeah. can see, oh, yeah. I can see the architecture background. Look at that. And I think that's, <laughs> yeah. that's I, I, I definitely get that now. Yeah. Um, Billy says he's still chasing after stuff, airspace. Please. Yeah. Airspace. I love the way you do these breakdowns oh, too, by the way. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was, that was actually not long after I, like, that was, um, maybe a couple of years after I got into C4D and it was just, I was sort of trying to, I even know what I was thinking when I made this. Like what, what <laughs> amazes friend... me is, is like when I, when I was, you know, thinking of questions for you, 
mm. my my thought was okay, I'm going to ask him what his background in, and and he's going to tell me, oh, I started out in graphic design. Because that's what we hear mm -hmm. 90% of the time mm -hmm. when you get a really good designer, you know, or a really good animator who's also a designer. And that's actually yeah. surprising to me that you started out in VFX. Yeah, but then when I came to New Zealand, I actually, I was sort of moving more into After Effects and design. So the kind of job I got over here was more based on design. But mm -hmm. then that started leading back into cinema 4d again so there was a bit of a vfx little bit of design period and then back into sort of more i guess what i am now which is 3d design crossover i suppose mm -hmm. yeah but um like yeah a lot of these things are pretty weird and out there but yeah it's sort of <laughs> that's um, what makes it cool thing, though I suppose. you know mm. like that's the thing pyramid fish yeah. you know Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so this was this this was kind of funny because it was like at the time i was this was when i was just doing i was getting into doing a lot of dailies stuff like i'd been following people for a while and i was like i'm gonna do this and uh -huh. we all do now and then um yeah my friend caspian was like we're doing this thing for pause fest and he's like do you want to do this and i was like okay sure and then obviously it said in like i've actually got to make something and then <laughs> i don't think i really thought at the time i didn't consider too much how many people was gonna were gonna see this and i was had I known, I probably would have been like, oh, man, what am I doing? But um, like, see, yeah. this was V-Ray. You, you do this a lot. You do a lot of these like striped, you know, I see a lot of these striped yeah. textures, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Love the stripes. <laughs> 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 yeah. I mean, I guess I mean, I've always been like, I, I guess I've always liked a lot of sort of concept design as well. And especially when they sort of mix that with more interesting kind of um, out there materials and things. Um, I used to read a lot of sort of concept art books and even like the stripe thing, I think was probably like a reference from Tim Burton kind of. I was going to say, as well, so, I wanted to say yeah. Tim Burton, but I, you never yeah. know who you're yep. going to affect totally when is. you say it looks very Tim Burton-esque. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I also used to draw a lot more, I think. I don't do it as much these days, um, but like back that breakdown you were showing, like, there was a lot of sketches in there. And I think it was just having time just to doodle in sketchbooks. Um, yeah. I, I keep meaning to get back into that because I think some of the best ideas kind of can come from things like that. But yeah, it's sort of another area that I want to do, but haven't had time for, for a while. So mm -hmm. yeah. What's the, uh, what's the, uh, uh, what's, what's kind of the background in the architecture stuff? Like, did you ever do oh, like no, photorealistic no. interior renders or stuff, or you just have an appreciation for the architectural yeah, pretty much the the second. I mean, I've never, I never, I've never done any architectural renders per se, um, and I didn't have a background in it. I mean, I, it was probably more um, photography that I got into a while ago, especially like traveling with a camera and just walking around the city. And I just mm -hmm. used to love just taking pictures of corners of buildings. My wife would be like, "What?" And <laughs> like, you'd be no, there no, for ten minutes it. trying to get this like, corner is beautiful. <laughs> The light, the light coming through this window, and it, it, like, yeah. it, it makes you yeah, look yeah, like the guy from American Beauty, like taking yeah. video of yeah, the bags. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who is this oh, idiot? But, um, yeah, I, I used to. I used to spend so long just like, like just for photographing parts of cities whenever I'm traveling and stuff, and yeah, it drove my wife crazy. But yeah, it's kind of what I love to do. So I think that kind of, I think that kind of influenced a lot of stuff as well. Like I, I love like the composition element of 3d as well and being able to design something and then just get like maybe five or six cameras out of it with just different sort of compositions and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. camera styles and things especially when you're sort of mixing it with lighting as well and you can sort of combine the shadows and the light and things like that um but yeah no i mean there's nothing really i never learned anything architecture wise i follow a lot of like websites and things and but it's nothing more than like just an appreciation of it really what are your what uh, so we've all got people who we look up to you know who's who who is it that you look at and you're like oh man if i could just if i was just that good <laughs> you know oh man like like because honestly, honestly like, i had a project so... i had a project where i i actually I, I, I was, I was thrown the pitch out and I used a ton of your examples. I was like, <laughs> oh, really? I want it awesome. to look like Thank this, you, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And like, if I could just get it to look like this, yeah. yeah who's yeah. that um, person for you? I don't know. I mean, I go through, I kind of, there's a lot of people to be honest. And most, there's so many talented people out that just, um, 
you know, I'm just thinking, oh, maybe I should do more stuff like this. Like sometimes you think that maybe your stuff is um, like sort of particularly caught in a certain era or something. And right. a lot mm. of people are making a new stuff that looks very cool now. Um, I really like sort of um, Vincent Schwenk, Kyle's stuff that he's been doing. Um, Nadia Diaz, she does great stuff. Um, I, I follow a lot of people on Twitter, but it's, yeah, I think there's always, there's always room for improvement. Um, I don't know how to answer. <laughs> well, see, Matt was able to accomplish it because he went and looked up what render engine you used and he bought it and he was just like you. Yeah. <laughs> just like you. Yeah. That's yeah. all you need. Yeah. All you need. See, I bought yeah. the render engine and then I bought all your yeah. training and there yeah. we go. Yeah. <laughs> Clone. <laughs> Be subscription model coming soon. Hey, there yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Awesome. Um, um, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, there's, it, it also like just I, I think it's also good to just to have a look at different areas like photography and other things that aren't just motion design. Like I really like looking at textile design and photography, mm -hmm. and just having more, I guess, areas of uh, inspiration. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, no, it's kind of cool if you can mix things around. Sorry, cool. we lost you for a second there on the on the thing. Oh, no, that's all right. all right. It's all right. We got it recorded. Report. We're all good. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's Probably see. Said something really <laughs> right. Uh, so, um, and and along that lines, like in in, you know, doing things in other areas and things like that. I had a really good segue going, but I don't think Matt was reading along with my notes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't. I, I, I wasn't. I'm sorry. Let's talk about Ableton for a second because <laughs> yes. Um cuz you've been doing it. Do you have like do you do you post uh music anywhere? Not yet. No. Yeah. I've been kind of I, I've got a lot of stuff saved, but none of it's really finished. Yeah. Um and I'd like to do that more, but I feel like um I've still got hundreds of crappy songs to get through before I <laughs> that good. You know, you got to get through all that stuff. Um, yeah, no, I've, I've, I've been super into, I got into Ableton a couple of years ago, um, got really into it. Um, in fact, stopped learning any 3d for a while and I was just like, it's real, I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn this, but, um, I, what is it about motion designers and muse music, right? Like, yeah, I don't know. I, did you ever play music? Like, were you in a band? Yeah. Yeah. I was I used to play guitar. And, okay. Um, I feel like, yep. I feel like every motion designer is just a failed musician at heart. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think so. I definitely failed, so yeah, yeah. that would be <laughs> completely right. Um, yeah, I know. And also I, I do find it like if you if you've got a if you're trying to make something and if you're trying to edit something together, it's like if you have a track, it's so much easier than if you're trying to do it dry. Like having some kind mm -hmm. of yeah. at least a song, even if it's something that you're not going to use, but just something that's got the the kind of rhythm that you want to mm -hmm. edit to, it makes it so much easier. Um, yeah. Yeah. And okay. Nose man said motion design is visual music. I like that. I can see that. It's, it's, it's actually super true. Like when I was, when I was getting into it more and more, you start to realize, I think if you've done music and you start doing design, or if you've done design, you start to do music, you kind of realize they're kind of, kind of linked in a way. Like mm -hmm. if you think about say like audio processing and like filtering stuff, it's similar to maybe doing blurs, sharpens and levels and things right. like that so yeah. Yeah. there is kind of like i think it's easier if you've come from one and you try and pick up the other than if you're coming into it like completely um fresh oh, maybe yeah. yeah yeah for sure um i mean I, I never you were saying you've used things like logic before i mean i never actually got into anything other than ableton that was my mm. first sort of um like sort of um foray <laughs> into, yeah. mm -hmm. into music design but um like ableton does feel a lot like kind of the cinema 4d of um making music because mm -hmm. it's got the kind of session view and it's got the recording Tracks, view and, and yeah and it's yeah it's actually it, it takes a little while to get into but it's pretty easy to pick up i i found um but then you just have to be good at making music which is obviously the next challenge <laughs> yeah. see i just use ableton for doing things like like voice stuff for the most part or maybe editing some simple yeah. music track like like doing a cut of a music track that's already it's already there and just making like a shortened version of it. I don't even know. Honestly, I don't even know if VS, if it accepts VSTs. 
Yep, so, yep, you can do that. Um, oh, you can. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I agree. It's 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 really cool for that, and especially if you've got some of the packs and stuff, you can very quickly like put together like a like a couple of loops that make it much easier for either just editing to, or you could say send it to a sound designer and say this is what I've got in my head. It's yeah. awful, mm-hmm. but you know, you get the idea like yeah. what I'm trying to go for. Um, yeah, but yeah, you can definitely use VSTs with it. Um, I use a lot of, I, I like a lot of sort of the hardware. No, sorry software since um mm-hmm. and wait you're talking yeah, about great you're talking about ableton or are you talking about audition oh i, ableton. I may have said ableton by ableton. accident i i'm sorry i meant to say uh, sure. they, they both start with an a you know um no uh sure of course i know vsts come into ableton but i didn't know if you could do right. that with audition because it's kind of simple in comparison but yeah i don't know I'm what sorry. VSTs I, have, I have no are. idea yeah so like um, plugins yeah actually basically plugins you know it's just like a standard you know because you can install uh if a vst is is a certain type and it can Mm -hmm. be accepted into different packages so like your your you know just like redshift being on different platforms essentially yeah billy in the chat's saying that you know nick from grayscale gorilla always describes nodes as an effect pedal board and mm-hmm. um, Joel Dead Mouse, he in one of the videos that we did uh, the behind the scenes, I think that we did, we were talking. To, he was talking about the fact that it's it's kind of just like uh, no, nodes for him were kind of like that. As it's just like patch cables, you know, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. you got a patch cable and it goes from this one to this one and this one to this one and. That's all you really have to know. That's the signal flow right there. So it was easy for him yeah, to pick exactly. up nodes because he came from that background. Mm, for sure. Yeah. Because you guys have um, you guys have been around Dead Masters, and he's got like the crazy. I I, I actually <laughs> ended up doing his um masterclass course on uh, oh, yeah. music making. Yeah, yeah. That's but cool. like the section he has of his giant modular synth he's got like in his basement, like oh man, that is awesome. Yeah. I, yeah. I actually think that was originally like the master bedroom or something really? that he turned into his studio. It is that that studio listening to music in it Man. is the clearest it's, I've ever heard insane. music in my life. It's insane. It yeah. it's it is like you you feel you feel high listening to it. Yeah. It's so it's such a weird sensation because it's just so clear. It's so perfect. it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's it's wow. hard to it's hard to explain it. Yeah. It sounds like a it sounds like a fun job. How long were you guys working out of there for? It was a while, hey. Uh like a week? Well, we've been oh, there okay. twice. Yeah. The second time we yeah, were we've there. Yeah, we've been there twice. Even longer, I think. The second time we were there for week. about a week. The yeah. first time we were there for a couple of days. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, he's got a lot of <laughs> toys, that's for sure. He's got yeah. a lot of toys. I yeah. bet. Yeah. yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, so okay. So, is there anything that you're working on right now that you can talk that you can talk about, or is or it all like super secret up? right now? <laughs> um, I've recently done. I mean, everything's kind of not released yet, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I did a job recently with um Tendril, which was awesome. Um, mm-hmm. it was just a Pro, uh, project for Visio, um, but I can't really say anything more because at the moment it's not been released. But mm-hmm. that was super fun. It was working with um, a guy, Vitaly Grossman, who's um, a really talented motion 3D guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was kind of directing it and taking the lead on that. And then we also had uh, Jeff Bryant as well doing lighting, um, Philip Pavlov, who was uh, doing uh, like sort of Houdini and Sim stuff. And then sort of uh, Chris Barry, who's like one of the directors uh, and sort of the rest of the Tendril staff. But that was a real fun project and hopefully it's coming out soon. So I can get to show that before too long. And um, just been working with uh, Scott Gearson for this year's TED. Um, yeah. It will be released soon as well. Yeah, so yeah. Um, Scott's been super busy, so he hasn't been able to get it online yet. But we've just finished working on that one. And that was, oh boy, that was another sorry. Big. Man, Ooh. I'm telling you, uh, this autoplay thing with Chrome has got to go. Sorry. Oh, man. No, no <laughs> anyway, worries. Anyway, sorry, keep going. No, no, that's cool. Um, so we had, um, it was, again, it was another project we've just done in the last couple of, last like month or so. And it was, we had like, um, Scott was directing it again. We had Rory McLean back again, as well as Jeff Bryant. 
and uh, Ezekiel Grand. So it was like the team from last year. And then we also had um, Jesus Suarez, uh, Nemanja Ivanovic, and also mm-hmm. Aaron Corbett and Jason mm-hmm. Crowley helping out a bit as well. So it was a cool team to kind of work on it this year as well. And um, yeah, hopefully it should be out very soon. But yeah, we're really proud of it. And it should be cool to share it with everyone. So That's awesome. Yeah. That's super cool. Sorry, it's not available to see just yet. So <laughs> that makes it completely <laughs> esoteric at the moment. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's a fun one to work on. It's always nice working with Scott because Scott's really really talented sort of director he, he's really good at blocking stuff out and he just sort of sends you his work in progress which is already looking amazing and it's just a case of kind of lighting things and mm-hmm. things like that so it's kind of the same as last year so yeah, yeah um that's about it we've just come back from sydney as well we went to uh, see vivid festival which was pretty cool how often do you get over there and not often enough um i actually haven't been since i first came to new zealand so it was like 10 years oh, ago really? which is crazy yeah wow. we, go to, we go to we go to melbourne quite a lot because um mainly because of node fest now which yeah James Cowan does which is awesome so we've been over to melbourne like about six times and uh this was our first trip back to sydney uh my wife beth's never even been so it was awesome to go over there and see that and catch up with a few people yeah that's cool yeah 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 Cool. Well, and you guys are sponsoring Node this year as well, so that's we are. pretty cool. Yes. MoGraph.com nice. is officially sponsoring. Just a little bit. Do, doing just, our, a little just a little bit. bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Have they have the tickets gone on sale yet for NodeFest? I don't think so. No. I know they've announced the Ident competition. I think yesterday it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so there's some cool stuff going on with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's normally. I don't want to say because I'll probably be completely wrong. Maybe so, July-ish time they release them. Yeah, tickets. November fifteenth is the date of the yep. actual uh, festival. Okay. So yeah. oh, let me click on tickets. Oh, we don't see. know the tickets. The tickets. Yet. Uh, on sale July first. Oh. oh, there you go. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, but um, yeah, it's a great, it's a great um festival. Like we don't really have anything else like that over here. And James started this maybe, I think it was three years ago, and mm-hmm. just. He's just doing a phenomenal, the phenomenal captain thing for it over here. The <laughs> captain, yes, captain. Yeah, yeah. he's awesome. So, yeah, I think yeah, he's going to come on the really the show and uh, talk to us a little about uh, the, yeah about Node nice. Fest uh, yeah. next month. So, yeah, 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 yeah. If you get over there, it's it's totally worth it, and you can get it'll be the middle of summer as well, so you can enjoy the hot weather and yeah, it's, yeah. it's very cool. I don't need to enjoy uh, the hot weather. I don't weather. have I don't have to speak <laughs> this year, which is great. <laughs> Yeah, I can just enjoy it <laughs> right. and not have yeah. to stress out about messing up. <laughs> yeah. Australia has been the one place that I, the one, it's like everyone has that one place that they want to go before they die. Mm-hmm. Australia so, has been that for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's just, it's so far, isn't it? From most yeah, places. it's just so such so a expensive. trek and it's so expensive. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's yeah. the problem. <laughs> Yeah, you need at I least like easily a week afford a one way. It's just getting back, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happened to me. I came over here, and then we were too expensive to go home. So. <laughs> Ten years. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, man. it's it's awesome over here. It's really cool. So yeah, cool. you get to make it over. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, what were we talking about? Let's uh, we completely. <laughs> no, let's let's go do some links because because we got to do some people's people and and MoGraph recommends and stuff too. So, um, mm-hmm. nice. let's let's uh oh first of all I had a link that's not in the notes that I that I did want to bring up because like I completely forgot about it, <laughs> and uh this is uh Maxon put out their video uh <laughs> this week oh, yeah. that's like all the fun behind the scenes stuff from uh. From NAB, and I love that they added they put Kerry, Kerry Moki in, in there. It's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. They put the uh, the MoGraph and uh, the MoGraph eye design event. I saw Rifi in there for a second. Yeah. I don't think I made the cut. Ah, I, I don't right. think I made the cut. I'm I'm sad. I'm sure you're I'm around sad. there somewhere. I'm, I'm, well, I'm probably I know in the I booth. Made the cut. <laughs> I'm behind that that wall in every single shot, probably doing something <laughs> techy. You know. Yeah. But um, yeah, really good video. It's a long video. It's got like all the stuff in it. So like we'll po- yeah. we'll post that in the show notes and uh, and you can check out nice. the the full cut. That was people, a little fun. Uh, people just uh, was messaging me just a few minutes ago about that. That's why and I he, that's why I was yeah. reminded of it. So so thank you, Mike. I completely forgot to put that in my notes. But, yeah. 
It's like, yeah. fantastic shot there. Thanks, Maxon. Because I think it's got his <laughs> goofy face or something. <laughs> well, you know. Oh, man. We love seeing that goofy face, though. That's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. All right. <clears throat> so beautiful. Link number one, now that we're actually in here. All right. YouTube has something called Stats for Nerds. Have you ever realized that this existed? If you're on any no. YouTube video, I discovered this by accident. If you right-click on it and ch uh, check it out, there's, like, uh, on any video, there's something called Stats for Nerds. And you can see, like, all this technical oh. info about oh, it. Neat. Yeah. Might come in handy for someone. Oh, I don't know. that's super cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. Kind of weird. Huh. But, uh... Um, Connection speed, buffer health, live latency. Mm-hmm. Wow. I didn't know it existed. That's kind of cool. Know. Yeah. <clears throat> that is definitely yeah. a stat for nerds. Yeah. And uh learning I'm... stuff all over today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another thing that uh is just in the crazy category, the out there category, it's not even related to motion graphics, but did you see Xbox is coming out with a body wash? I did see that. I yes. thought it was fake. But it's not April Fools. So what does it smell like? Sweaty. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it makes you smell like a gamer or if it's yeah. supposed to be yeah. like the first body wash maybe, for gamers to ever maybe, use ever. Yeah, maybe the gaming community is so like it's so smelly that they're like, all right, we've got to do something, gotta do about, something this about this because yeah. these these uh these uh live uh esports arenas are just you know <laughs> <laughs> honking. <That's funny>. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's funny. Um, awesome. Check that out. It's real though. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Chad's super cool short shortcut for putting Google Apps on the taskbar. He just happened to post this the other day, and I thought this is really cool because if you're in Chrome, and you use mm -hmm. a lot of like the calendar and and all the the you know G Suite apps things like that, if you're in Chrome and you type the you click the little three but three dot button thing whatever you call that on the top mm -hmm. right for customized yeah say you're on your gmail page right and you want to make a shortcut for that well you go down to more tools and then you go create shortcut and then you use the checkbox open as a window and it will create that shortcut on the desktop and then you could put that like down in in your bar so now down in my bar i have that and it puts the favicon from the website as the icon so like now I have a Gmail shortcut in my start menu bar, which is really cool. Oh nice. So where's that? Uh, yeah. Where is what? I'm confused. Oh, never mind. Oh. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> cool. The shortcut. And it yeah. the only thing that I don't like is it is it opens it in its own window without like any tabs. And you can right click on the window and say open in the browser, but it like doesn't open it right. It's it's weird, but it's really cool, like if you want to have your mail down there and not have type it in every time you know that's so, super cool yeah. i like that well done yeah. chad thanks chad yeah yeah you I can't do that Mac, can you <laughs> well <laughs> technically it's chrome so probably Take that oh <laughs> all oh. right you can do it in the iphone for sure nice try yeah <laughs> um other other links i got here uh oh let's talk about a vital sign oh yeah 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 so uh uh Y'all know our original fan, one of our original fans, Paul Robinson. Um, he was if watching you earlier. You haven't had the chance. Yeah, he was. Um, uh, send three productions. Uh, if you, if you, he also runs the uh, podcast with his wife, the uh, Go Gorilla podcast. Mm -hmm. It's all about like real filmmaking and independent film and stuff like that. It's a very good podcast. It's actually cool. one of my favorites. Um, oh, they nice. are doing a Indiegogo campaign right now uh, for their newest uh, their newest short film called A Vital Sign. Uh, so we'll have the link up there in mm -hmm. the show notes. Uh, make sure and check it out. You can go to www.avitalsign.com. And, and the thing about this is they kind of made a sample for you to see of what mm -hmm. they're doing. And it's basically like and they show like what they've got to pay their people, what they've got to pay yep. the people who are there, what mm. they've got to pay the, the people who are like shooting, uh, what it costs for food, that kind of thing to kind of like it. It's really great. So check that out, especially oh, if cool. you're a yeah. listener of the show and you want to support other listeners, you know? 
Yeah, and uh, if uh, if anything, at least go check out their podcast, mm-hmm. uh, the Go Gorilla Gorilla spelled like Gorilla Warfare. Go Gorilla podcast. Mm-hmm. It's a really good podcast. I like it. They get a lot of like independent directors and independent actors and stuff, and it's uh, very cool. Very yeah. cool podcast. Nice. Uh, also, another mention I put out here. I don't think he has a public link to it yet. He posts some stuff on Facebook, but uh, Lil, Lil Ryan, Lil Ryan, <laughs> yeah, Ryan Talbot. Uh, he worked on a logo for Master Chef season ten, which I think is pretty cool. Oh yeah, so um, down in Australia, right? Uh, I did. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think it was Australia. Where it was, I think yeah. so. Uh, so check that out. And then David Aryev posted his Intel string out. Of all the Intel shots, all the fun Intel shots uh, that uh, he's been working on over the last few months. And uh, Matt, you and I have helped him with that. Uh, Raid yep. Zero, Phil uh, has helped. And Matt Bowden, is that it? Was anybody else involved in the project? Did I miss anybody? I don't know. Hopefully not. There's probably there's probably a good chance. Turned out did. really cool, I though. I saw that. It looked huge, yeah. Great. Yeah, it's a big project. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, heaps of like breakdown bits and stuff. That was super cool to see. How yeah. long were you guys working on it for? Not that, I we didn't weren't spend working that much on it time. That long. I did. I did the minimal amount of work. Me personally, <laughs> you know, it was like get a credit. Yeah. here, model this chip. Okay, two rectangles. <laughs> yeah. We're you were good. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, the, the stuff uh, that Dave, I was working on a took a little while. On. Yeah, I spent like yeah. a good week, week plus, I think, on it or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but um, but I was only working on a small portion of it. We did some modeling of the sure. some of the chips, and then I worked on some of the the landscaping and HUD stuff in that car shot scene, that long car shot scene. Yeah. But mm-hmm. um, we'll have a link for cool. that in the notes as well. Um, also, uh, Vic, Victor thought uh, wait for wait for i'm sorry weight of thought is his um um his i guess technically company name i think uh he put out a demo as well and i just watched that this week it's really cool it's gonna be that'll be on vimeo that's gonna be in the show notes and then notch i keep hearing stuff about notch notch this notch that yeah you know um i guess casey hupke posted i guess he he has a a key for it or something like that so he's um can be trying it out or something and mm-hmm. uh notch said it's gonna be on the show in a few weeks it'll be on the show in a few weeks maybe we can talk about oh, it cool. and nice. um yeah. as well as by the way jules is coming on next week to give more information about octane x and um and uh octane 2019 roadmap as well so uh 2019 yeah if you want to hear more about that he'll be here <laughs> Uh, Notch has is making like a GPU video encoder and it's compatible with Adobe stuff, so like it'll go into Adobe Encoder. And I just saw there's an article about this. I'll put a link in the show notes. I'm hoping Ooh. that I'll have some time to actually play with that. I I want to say that I uh, I I looked it up and like did a few like looked at some of the the features and stuff. It's very interesting. In the sense that it is node based, but also kind of layer based, as weird as that oh. sounds, like depending on the level in which you have the node, like it will take precedence over other nodes. Oh. It's very, it, it very, very interesting workflow. So, can you do like multiple outputs and stuff through it and things like that? Like, I don't know. Just, no. But uh, hmm, it, it definitely yeah. looks interesting. I downloaded it, a demo. I, I'm just today. happy there's going to be. I'm happy there's going to be uh, at least some contenders against you know, After Effects, sure. you yeah. know, with Notch and Cavalry coming. So mm. yeah, and you got yep. that hit film thing too with oh know, yeah or whatever yeah. Mm. Um, and then lastly, in the links for today, this hackers intro. Nick Scarcella, he was yeah, on last week. Yeah, Nick Scarcella. Yeah, he nice. finished this hackers, this new hackers intro. It was so great. Like I, I thought it was, yeah, excellent. That render super, is super fire. Super, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> but, Rich, did you have a chance to look at this? It was... Uh, no, no, I so, haven't seen it yet. Sorry. I do you know, you know the movie Hackers? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. So uh, uh, our buddy Nick Scarcella, he was actually on the show a couple weeks ago. Um, yes, he yeah, redid... So 
uh, he redid the intro oh, for yeah. Hackers Two in like a more ago. modern way, and so it was super cool. Oh, awesome. I really liked it. Yeah, I I, I want to press the button, but I'm worried it's going to crash. Skype, <laughs> so I'm like, uh, should I press it? Oh, maybe I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to watch it afterwards, but awesome. I'll definitely check for that. Yeah, cool. cool man. No, it's it's really cool. I went back and I looked at the original because I was like, what did they even do in the original? You know, um. But yeah, super cool. Oh, there you oh, go. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I love nice. some of the stuff he did. I kind of missed it here, but there's this transition at the beginning oh, awesome. I really like. And um, so, yeah. Yeah, really cool looking stuff. Um, I'll kind of like click and forward And he did this here. all in like this. a week or seven days oh, oh. Or, or, or a week or seven days. The same. Either way. Uh, or like 10 nice. days or something like that. You know, it was a very short amount of time. Yeah, he just had oh. some extra time to. See, kill, this is so. very similar to the original, you know, yeah. because it was yeah. like uh, cities and then they turned it into. Yeah, they compared it. Like yeah, that's the comparison I saw when I, I looked at it. I thought this was beautiful. Yeah. yeah. You know, you see, uh, I mean, the 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 uh, worn material and then uh, Super it looks macro. like we got a little GSG uh, uh, dust in there. You know? <laughs> uh is that the is, uh, is that the uh, Cornelius Damrick? I don't think so. Uh, I don't think you so. You don't think so? No. All right. No. <laughs> All right. Well, there's the actual movie. Let me turn it off before I get sued. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, YouTube or Vimeo is okay with it, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about anybody else. Anyway, um, that is it for the links, and now it's time for Beeple's people. Well, I'm gonna run out of the restroom. Yeah. Like you That's do. That's your cue. Uh -huh. All right. So we're going to ha have you had a chance to catch. I know you've caught some shows, but have you ever caught the Beeple's People segment before? I caught it once. Yeah. I okay. think I saw the one with Simon. Yeah. Okay. So you Simon kind of Hall have an also. idea of yeah. like, you know, how this goes. Okay. So um, kind of, yes. <laughs> I'm going to open up my Beeple viewer of choice, which is Twitter. And... Uh, I'm going to scroll down here. I'm in like super enlarged mode. It's going to take me forever to scroll down here. I'm scrolling down to <laughs> June 3rd, Year of Our Lord 2019. And uh, the name of this one is Solo Mission. And I'll bring it up here. He actually did an animated version of this oh, yeah, as yeah. well. And um, I think I, I love this one because I feel like if there ever was a Beeple's People movie... And, I mean, I've got my own ideas for a Beeple's People movie, but if there were was ever a Beeple's People movie, I feel like this would be one of the intro scenes where you see this guy going through the desert in, like, this circular I got it. vehicle. And uh, if you look at the animated version of this that he did, hopefully the uh, the sound doesn't get all loud and stuff when I maximize it. There we go. I feel like this would be, like, the cool, like, opening shot to the to the movie and you're like what is going on where is this guy going something like that i don't know yeah oh gosh oh man. this yeah. is so, such a dang pretty render yeah but... yeah it's really good awesome. it's really good it's not I was just like, looking at the still yeah. one and now i see this holy i love the little antenna he's got going around in the top mm -hmm. here too that's super cool looking yeah um man. yeah it'd be killer if it looped though sorry mike if it really loops, loop. yeah. <laughs> wah, wah. Right, so see the perfect loop. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Not loading very well because apparently I I don't have good internet going on right now. But man, yeah. I absolutely love it. So like I, this this, we don't know who this character is. Yeah. At the moment, but I feel like we're there is find not out. a thing about this that I don't like. Like you know, normally we can will will poke fun of them and be like, ah, oh, that scales all off and stuff like that. But this is but a gorgeous, <laughs> gorgeous video. What? Yeah. So, but yeah, but usually we're just joking. Yeah, we yeah. are. Um, <laughs> anyway, because uh, uh, I'm trying to rush through a little so we don't lose internet yeah. <laughs> again because everyone's watching Netflix with while well, we're doing our late show this time. Um, let's see. So the next one is June 5th. <laughs> This is called WWDC 2081, and I think this is the night mm -hmm. the Mac Pro was announced that uh, yeah. this was created. Uh, I think it's interesting that uh, there. I, I I think it's interesting he went with Tim Cook instead of uh, Steve Jobs well, because I would think in the future, you know, 
like this is so far into the future anyway, you know, 2081, mm, mm-hmm. that I would think Tim Cook would probably be dead. So mm. uh, either that or they're just showing an old video of Tim Cook. They're probably you know? showing a clip of when they announced the Mac Pro Tower. You know, <laughs> they're probably showing yeah. a clip of when they announced the last Mac Pro Tower. <laughs> right. Oh, there you go. <laughs> And we're really excited about this. I can tell right there he's yeah. saying, and we're really excited about this. This is the it's best one we've made ever. Two years since we had an update to the Mac Pro. <laughs> this is our best Mac Pro ever. At what point are they going to say, and it's this is our second. Twice as fast yeah. as the last one. <laughs> this is our second yeah. best Mac Pro ever. Like, when would it not be your best? So, like, can you just stop saying that for everything you release? Everything is the best that it's ever been. Well, I hope so. Anyway, so what has happened at this point? Because you got these machines up on stage. You got the people watching. Is this what keynotes are now in the future? This, uh, yeah, I don't know. Apple runs the world. This this reminds me of the presentation from Robocop when they show Ed 209. (laughs) Oh, right. Uh, Maybe those guys in the background are about to... Open fire oh, on the crowd. Oh man! Yeah, just could down. be a dark turn. Maybe that's what the red light is above his head. Oh, oh yeah! Man, they're yeah, about to get destroyed. No, let's. That's that's ending on a bummer. Let's think of something. <laughs> Are those Mac Pro <laughs> trash cans on Maybe the left and right? Yeah, I just noticed. Man, those. Hey, I reckon it might could be. be. That might be. They might switch back to the trash can when they switch back in yeah. 2081 when the next one comes out. Interesting. Yeah, but look how I'm big they it's... are in comparison. Of course, you got big Maybe. people and uh, small people. People. Well, I don't right? know if they're big. The... I think they're up on a platform over watching. Yeah, they could be. Yeah. Maybe they're know. the Click new on tower. the picture. Uh, are you, are you, are the you picture. cropping out any of it? No, no. No, that's click it. on it. Uh-huh. Wait. Oh. Oh yeah, you can see their feet on the platform down there. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, yeah. there's no platform. Wait. They're standing on. They're big people, people. Oh, oh, that isn't a platform. Oh wow. Yeah. Weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big people, people. So they're in. They could fit inside of these mech robots. Right? Yeah, maybe. I think there could be I mean, people inside. Technically, you could get a small person to fit inside a mech robot. You could fit at least. Yeah, that's the at, point of a mech robot, isn't it? I don't know. I'm looking at it. You could fit, <laughs> I don't know, at least 20 little people's people inside of it. That's true. You could. You know, yeah. have an R2-D2 type situation, people. but you you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> they can control all the bits and pieces. I think it's interesting they have these people up here on platforms out in the distance, too. What are those guys going to do up there? I don't know. Yeah. yeah, weird. It's like a diving platform or something. Right. <laughs> There's no water. <laughs> Let's start crowd surfing. Actually, yeah. no, they're probably lining up as an example. They're probably, like, going to jump from the platform and, like, get shot up. Maybe. To show that they can it's kill them dark, before hey. they hit the ground. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And now you can see the light at the top now that I expanded yeah. it, too. Yeah. And you, you're gonna, you guys are going to die. Anyway, um, <laughs> the, the last one is June 7th. This one's called Recursive Prayers. And the first thing I think of is like Never Ending Story. Never Ending Story. Yeah, yeah there you go. Oh, yeah, yeah, I knew it. True. Yeah. <laughs> Except these look yep. like less look like, great. you know, statues with busts and, and more like um, yeah. uh, Halo characters. Yeah. You know, or maybe yeah. it's Metroid. Yeah. It could be uh, Ode to so Samus. Like- Samus? Well, Sam, they could Sam, be, Samus? like, this could be, uh, uh, this religion has become, uh, uh, based all around the military, you know? And so, mm. like, it's just, and because it's all in ruins, it's an example of, like, you know, what happens when you join church and state. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Nose Man. I know we were off. We know we were off for five, five minutes. We were scrambling it. to fix it for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Nose Man. Uh, um, yeah, Nose Man. Too many people watching Netflix right now, and we're doing a late show. So I guess yeah. that's the problem. Either that, or I need to go fix this cable modem, yeah. or both. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, Nose Man's a lot. Le- everybody else gave up. I guess. Yeah, everyone is like, this point. Ah, I guess it's over. <laughs> All yeah. Right. yeah, but um, I like it's I uh, like the uh, the recursive prayer thing. It's like a long yeah. haul. Yeah, yeah. Like this looks like mm-hmm. it's rubbleized. So you know this could have formerly been like a part of something even bigger. You know these could be ruins somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. 
but this planet apparently has instances of the same prayer all the way down. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't know that, what they're praying that, to. That arch doesn't look too stable. Hey, mm -mm. I feel like it's no. about to. Uh, mm. Could be a good, a good yeah. collapse. What's funny is every oh, single arch is stone. What the keystone right there? Like that's uh, yeah, it's about to go. And every single one of them in every single yeah. one is 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 uh, falling apart in the exact same way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the beauty of instances. Yeah, right. Instant applause. that's yeah. right. Yeah, like that that's though. Funny. Okay, so before we completely lose internet, why don't we right. uh, finalize our show today by doing <laughs> MoGraph recommends? Hey, you got, I got it right. right. I changed my template last week. <laughs> see. <laughs> and we're going to go through and uh, talk about some of your, a few of your favorite things, as they say. And nice. we're going to start that out uh, with your favorite movie. Oh, has to be one. I have about 10 movies that I pretty much a few of your favorites revolve around. Right? Sure, yeah. you can just kind of throw oh, them out we'll there. We'll just list them off. I mean, obviously, I'm a big fan of like the old things like Blade Runner, Alien, Akira. Mm -hmm. Um, also like big fan of David Lynch stuff. Like I really love Wild at Heart. I think it's one of the okay. best, um, Nicolas Cage films. Um, mm. if I had to choose one, maybe my favorite one that I saw recently would be, um, Manhunter, which is like an old, it's quite an old film from the eighties. It's like one of Michael Mann's early films, mm -hmm. but it's kind of the first film that had, um, Hannibal Lecter, uh, okay. it, as a character in it, but it's just a very... It's a great story. The soundtrack's awesome. It's got a cool sort of um, style and mood to it. Really like that one. Did you, uh, um, speaking of David Lynch, did you watch the new uh, the new Twin Peaks? I did. Yes, I'm a big fan of Twin Peaks, and yeah. uh, man, yeah, good. so I really weird. liked it. Yeah, I know it's exactly, but it's uh, <laughs> it's interesting that you can, like, after a 20 year break, I was like, oh mm -hmm. man, I don't know, but yeah, yeah, so, I was I was really happy because I felt like the 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 like story-wise, it was just as weird as the previous mm. ones, you know. Yeah, exactly. But the production value was like awesome. Like it was yeah, so yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. And the ones like hot, like when it gets to the what is it? The God of Light one, man. I'm just like what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I uh, so I, I just fan. finished True Detective season one. Like I'd never oh. seen it. And that no, is. I've never seen two or three, but I've seen. Don't season worry one. about yeah. two or three. Season one gave me <laughs> such like the same feeling as watching. Yeah. It felt like a bit more structured Twin mm. Peaks, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. it, it's almost like he knew they knew where they were writing the whole time instead yeah, of just exactly. like, you know, oh, let's throw this yeah. in there, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, Matt, Twin Peaks so much was discovery canceled. writing. Yeah, Twin Peaks never made it past season two, but it planned to be way longer, and so it got cut. It was like trying to tie everything up in the last yeah. episodes of season two, and it was, it was already like madness anyway, but... Yeah, I was um, sad we never yeah. got to find out what happened to the girl who got turned into a uh a dresser for sure yeah <laughs> man as somebody who hasn't watched the show <laughs> what yeah, yeah already, exactly then. that yeah hmm. yeah yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> and well okay so watch the first matt watch the first couple episodes of true detective season two and then send me a text yeah. message and let me know how much you like it Mm. <laughs> I'll be interested to All see because right. my initial impression was what in the world happened like did you watch the rest of season 2 no I didn't even finish it it wasn't even oh, good enough for got, me I to be interested know. to finish I don't know. a lot All of right. people have said that and I was surprised there is a season you 3 know what? here's the thing I didn't like season 1 the first episode I was like wow this is really slow and boring you know mm. but then once I realized okay it's supposed to be kind of slow you know, mm -hmm. and then it eventually like builds. Yeah, it got a lot better. I just started watching. I'm like, hmm. what is going? Who is who is this? What? I, and I saw a lot of people online asking the same question. Like, wait, what? What is supposed to be going on here? And then after a few more episodes, I was just like, this is just not, this is not catching me at all. Like the last one did. It's really weird. Yeah. And there was also mm -hmm. a rumor for a long time during season one that. You know they were going to do a bunch of these, and there were going to be all these famous people in it, and that um, that Brian Cranston and uh, uh, what's his name, the other guy uh, mm. from Breaking Bad. Uh, oh, um, Aaron oh, Paul. Yeah. Aaron Paul. That they were going to be detectives for a season at some point. 
That would be funny. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. But, well, apparently season three is really good. Like Rotten Tomatoes yeah. has it about out about as good as season one. Season three is supposed to be better, so yeah. All right. It's All right. the thing. <laughs> but speaking of TV shows, what gonna... <laughs> what is your favorite TV show? Um, after Twin Peaks was well, I guess at the moment I'm watching Chernobyl, which is yes, pretty yes. awesome, pretty bleak, but man, yeah. it's crazy. Um, yeah, yeah. Did you hear that Russia didn't like that uh, uh, they were that they made Chernobyl, mm -hmm. so they're making their own version uh, about how <laughs> American <laughs> spies uh, caused the Chernobyl accident. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Even though they like admitted <laughs> this stuff, like this is like common knowledge at this point. It's like you yeah, guys admitted this stuff. Like it's it's been out there, and all of a sudden it's a conspiracy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like whatever. The only thing well, about Chernobyl, to watch. yeah, sure. I want to see it now, right? Like, let's yeah. see this <laughs> propaganda film, shall we? Um, yeah. So, the thing I didn't like about Chernobyl is that it was too short. I feel like it could have used yeah. a few more episodes. It would have been fine, you know. I'm still. I think I've got. I maybe have one or two left to go. I think. I have it's all been released over here now. We're watching it on one of the streaming things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I've got at least one or two left. So there's mm -hmm. only five. I've only episodes, watched the but... first one. Yeah, you know, but it's yeah, yeah. Uh, it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Now, what about music? Um, I like. I generally listen to a lot of sort of electronic synth, synth wave kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, makeup and vanity set, I love. Um, Pilot Priest, um, Baturbata, Carpenter Brut, kind of stuff like that. So just a lot of like, yeah, synth based kind of music for the most part pretty much do you find yourself yeah. listening to that more when you're working as opposed to like in the car or is it just um across the board uh across the board but i mean i definitely listen to it more like i i, I find it hard to focus on music while i'm working so sometimes it's easier to have something a bit more simpler maybe or, or like mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll have it on but i won't really acknowledge that i'm listening to it if i'm working on something right. so yeah mm -hmm. I, pref I probably prefer it more enjoy it more if i'm away from the computer but yeah that's how i did and sure. uh <laughs> i know you don't listen to a lot of podcasts but when you do mm, i mean you guys want obviously but um yeah i don't have my i don't listen to too many podcasts just because just I cannot focus on two things like yeah. working and listening to stuff and and my commute to work is like 10 minutes so right it would take nice. weeks to get through a podcast um <laughs> but <laughs> um also i mean i guess my my buddy blair does the one over here the pro video mm -hmm. podcast yep. so i think that's that's cool for us over here because it's all like sort of mostly local based but then you get yeah. guys like yourself and some other people from over so it'll be good to see his um him starting that one up again for sure yeah yeah that's exciting that's what I'd say. And as far as uh, plugins, what's your favorite? Oh plugin? yeah, um, I guess my favorite plugin is probably one called Mesh Boolean, which I don't know if yeah. you come across. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Like if you need to, it just does all the kind of Boolean stuff. And it's Boolean geometry, but if you need to make stuff that looks good really quick and you haven't got time to model it, it's it's pretty awesome, and you can get some mm -hmm. really nice looking stuff. Cool. Um, Scott Gearson kind of got me into it on the first TED video. He was using it for lots of blocking and stuff, and it's yeah, it's pretty awesome. That one came out like uh, a year or so ago, right? It's been out for a while, yeah. I think they had an update too, um, but yeah, it's I use it pretty much in a lot of stuff. Um, Were you yeah. uh, a Fusion 360 person? No, I, um, I tried. I, I got into Moe 3D because okay. Uh, mm. He's like um he's one of the concept designers for um he did like Ghost in the Shell and lots mm -hmm. of other crazy cool things. Um but uh, no, I've never got into fusion just because time and learning. Yeah. I, I like the fact that it's got like a node, like a time based thing for that kind of stuff. Yeah, I wanted that, um... to say for some reason I thought because a lot of your stuff is this mesh Boolean type stuff. You know, oh, well, it's like yeah. hard surface modeling uh, yeah. uh type stuff. Mm. That, so a lot, uh, a lot of that stuff is actually probably Moe 3D. Like that's another okay. program. It's very similar to Fusion 360. Um, but yeah, it's like it's kind of like working in Illustrator, but in 3D. Super easy to make stuff, and you can export it to just any kind of file format. So yeah, cool. That's also would be if it was a plugin, that would be a good one. <laughs> what about headphones? 
Um, I've actually, I actually like these at the moment. I've just got these like a month or so ago. The AKG K two seven fives. I like that it has a They're quite plug new right there on the side. Like it's it's not wired in. You mm. can pull that out, right? No, exactly. You could replace it if it breaks. And they also fold as well, so um, they are semi portable. And you also don't need like an amp necessarily to run them. So mm -hmm. they're kind of like fairly sort of mid price studio headphones, but they're also, you can use them on anything, which is kind of cool. And they're only about two, I think they're three, three, seven, five New Zealand dollars. So, which is maybe 175 US. So, mm -hmm. gotcha. and yeah, I mean, I don't, I haven't gone through loads and loads of headphones, but they, they're sort of very sort of balanced sound to my ears. Um, sound stage is good. And, yeah, I mean, if anything, then maybe the pads might not be quite as comfortable as I'd like. So maybe I might try swapping them out, but I don't really want to change the sound too much. So, yeah, but I like these a lot. Yeah. By the sure. way, I... They don't I, cost a thousand bucks, but yeah, they're good. These, these guys right here, because I use my, my bows so often, they, they oh, yeah. wore out and I got the new replacement pads and I went with the real ones, not the knockoff pads. Yeah, we were talking you know, about that a couple of weeks ago. Spend the 35 bucks. Right. But uh, yeah, they came. They're very easy to replace. So I know a lot of you are using nice. these. It's totally, totally easy to do. Um, cool. So the next one is website or Chrome extension. And we've added to this, you know, if it makes it easier, favorite app instead. If that, if that makes the oh, question okay. easier. Um, well, I suppose like favorite website, um, I really like uh, Colossal which is like uh, mm. sort of just a general design sort of thing. It's, this is colossal.com. Um, it's just a, a nice roundup of like, all sorts of art design photography. It's just a cool one to I always have on my homepage because it just shows you lots of what's going on in sort of like the the world around sort of MoGraph and things as well. So, cool. yeah, that's kind of my favorite sort of site that I keep on my homepage cool. from time to time. Yeah. Nice. Pretty nice. interesting stuff. If you scroll through there, it's just like inspiration forever yeah <laughs> absolutely Jeez. Yeah. wow yeah that's pretty good and then right, yeah this is going on my homepage too yeah bookmark and then um i guess that leaves the last one which is uh life hack oh right um yeah i don't i don't have too many life hacks per se um i try and do i've been trying to get into doing some yoga in the morning just not in any way like exercise like essentially it's just like trying to combat sitting in a chair all right. day and uh trying to fix like myself from becoming too old too quickly so <laughs> yeah and like about, like a year or two ago i had like the worst neck pain from working on a job it was three mm -hmm. months of just like hunched over a desk which is obviously terrible and, yeah yeah so just trying to kind of uh be a bit more aware about like these sort of issues i suppose that can cause much greater problems down the track especially as i'm like on the worst side of 13 to 40 now so it's um, <laughs> starting to add up a bit i think so yeah. yeah um but other than that i don't know i mean i usually try and i try and start working fairly early in the day i hate like if, if something goes wrong and you end up working super late i kind of hate that so mm -hmm. try and start things super early so if anything goes wrong you have a chance to kind of fix your mistakes um yeah nothing nothing super awesome i suppose just general general work yeah stuff. that's always the hardest one is the life hack one so yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> i've not got any kind of super life affirming stuff but yeah yeah nose man says life advice don't get old I'll try I'll try I'll try failed whoops yeah. <laughs> cool oh, well we made it through despite our internet issues yeah if you're listening to the Yay. audio version of the show you're like what 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 issues i didn't hear anything david's such a great editor <laughs> seamless <Yeah. laughs> we but know how much he loves editing yeah, i love editing <laughs> i got all these markers now um so upcoming shows like i said we got jules next week right mm -hmm. uh that's awesome. gonna be a bunch of fun the next week we got chris schmidt we've yeah. been talking about getting chris nice. schmidt on the show awesome. for a long time i can't wait it's gonna yeah. be fun and uh, then we got been watching his intro. Yeah. <laughs> then we got, on, then we got uh, <laughs> Casey Hupke the week after that, which that's going to be fun too. We're going to be talking about uh, some of the stuff we're going to be talking about at Camp MoGraph, 
which is yeah. like the wellness we, and we've been, mental fitness. Uh, we've been doing our meetings with all the uh, camp count or the camp instructors and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Super excited to, for what they've got in store. Yeah. Uh, uh, and all the different like activities and stuff. It's going to be so much fun. So much fun, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> um, then uh, we don't we, we've got uh, one week that I've got kind of a blank there that we're trying to fill right now. But um, then uh, Josh Johnson uh, will be mm -hmm. the week after. Oh, cool. Just added him today. Nice. Uh, we were going to have Andrew Price, but he's too busy for yeah. us. He said yes, too and then he backed us. it back out. So, yeah, whatever. It's an all-star lineup. Look at that. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a great summer here. So Yeah, but it's all downhill from here, Rich. It's all downhill. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't count on it. I reckon. <laughs> I reckon. It's, <laughs> I reckon it's all the way up from now. I hope Who's so. Who's the missing guy going to be there? That's the one. I don't know. Yeah, right. You're going to have to find one. It's going to be. It's got to be choice. a good one. Yeah. That's a week off nice. show. That's what we oh, do. Yeah. Geez. yeah, summer vacation. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Or a David Ari have a show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, David, come be on the show. Come on. Yeah. Make it number fifty-three or something. I don't know. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, you can rate us on iTunes, leave a review, let us know what you think about the show. We haven't really done, remember we used to do those, those, uh, contests, like to leave a review and we got a ton mm -hmm. of reviews and like now we don't ask about it anymore and we don't get any reviews anymore. So please leave a review, help get our ratings up on iTunes. You know, can also subscribe to the show on your podcatcher of choice. Uh, we do have a newsletter. If you'd like to check that out, you can find that on MoGraph.com. You can say you've been there, done that, got the t-shirt with the MoGraph logo tee, Paul Bab, Feel the Bab 2020 shirt, all the profits from that. Go to Doctors Without Borders. There's the Render Things shirt, hoodie, and long sleep tee. And then, of course, this new one right here, that Render is Fire render shirt. Render is Fire. You know, <laughs> nice. only a few people yep. will get this when you're out in public, <laughs> if that. But, you know, the ones that do, you're going to be like instant, instant buddies. <laughs> <laughs> and of course we're on facebook twitter instagram periscope youtube mograph.com we got a lot of cool stuff coming up i'm editing a bunch of mograph talks eventually mm -hmm. we'll get back to the tutorials we got classes coming out we got camp mograph all the stuff and things we're slowly ramping this up as fast as we can get it out which is pretty slow but it really is as fast <laughs> as we can get it out right now it's nuts can't um, MoGraph, y'all. Yeah. Can't MoGraph. Okay. Sign up. Don't forget that contest. I'm telling you, please. I, I, I need, like, some some entries. Just if you're not even going to come, <laughs> if you don't want a ticket, I'll I'll find you a little something for, for a fun yeah. prize or something. Just just to say yeah, thanks. Yeah, maybe we'll send you a, this is a render fire. Or this you is will this send render you a tea. fire. Okay, there you go. Oh, boy. No, uh, I don't know. We might get... No, no. I'm going to say okay. No, I'm going to say okay. This music video right. has to be good, like, for it to be anything worth even trying to get out there, you know, uh, yeah. at all. So, anyway. Oh, bye, Nose Man. Love you. See, maybe we can get Nose Man on the show again. It's been a while. Yeah, I don't yeah. have... That's That'd be, like, a four-hour show, though. Yeah, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm asking. Oh, um... All right. Well, Rich, we really appreciate you coming on. We've been like, yeah, man, we've, we've to... been excited to have you on for a really long time. Yeah, so. awesome. Well, it's been so good to talk to you. Yeah, I really yeah, appreciate man. you guys having me. So, thank you. Yeah. Um. If if anybody wants to check you out, it's going to be richnosworthy TV. Are there any other places online? That's right. Pretty much. Uh... Um. Just I guess Instagram. Yeah. Twitter, the usual things. I think they're on my website, but if not, it's just. Rich Nosworthy, normally. Not many people have my name, so yeah. I can pretty much claim that one for yeah, most right. of these. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> luckily. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, um, but yeah, thank you guys yeah. so much. Yeah, we really appreciate you taking the time and figuring out this really weird schedule with us. It's so crazy. Like, it's yeah. just no, brighter and brighter, and like you can see the sun setting behind Matt yeah, right now. Yeah, exactly. On the wall. Yeah, there. I'm like. <laughs> oh that. geez yeah that's hardcore that's crazy yeah <laughs> yeah it's a good flash. thing i have i have like a ctb right here you know just <laughs> getting perfectly just blue yeah there you go <laughs> always thinking ahead there you go all right now um well i guess that's it we're gonna get out of here until next week i'm dave i'm matt i'm rich have a good one <laughs> later you guys thank you bye all right, we're still live. Oh, man. Move Thank you all this so stuff much. Real oh. quick. <laughs> Thanks for dealing with our technical issues there.
Hey, no worries, man. I think it was possible for me. <laughs> Let me, uh, I'm gonna power off my live things real quick, and then we can chat for a second here. Let me. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna stop the sound. Cool.